Kevin Usyk to Hutchinson. Makes a move. Can't get by the defenseman. Tries to pass it across, and it's intercepted by Stu Trimble. Trimble gets it to center ice, and that's as far as it'll go. Here's a chance for Hutchinson, and he'll go offside as Ivan Usyk didn't get a chance to get back over the blue line. And finally, we have a stoppage in play, so we can talk a little bit about this hockey game. Uh, we were talking to uh, Rich Meadows Flames head coach Pete Crowther before the game, and you know, he, I asked him, well, what, are, what is your team going to have to do to win... To, to beat the Richmond Sockeyes. The first thing he said was, we're going to have to contain Steve Howitt and Brendan Wuss, and he probably lost a few more hairs when he saw Steve Howitt go in there all alone against uh, his, his goaltender, Ziga Ivanik, but uh, Ivanik was up to the challenge and made the save, but that's not what Crowther wants to see. He doesn't want to be giving those guys any scoring chances. Here comes a delayed penalty to the Flames as... Virian Kirst goes to the bench. The Sockeyes have got six players out there. Look to score on this delayed penalty. Brad Swanson down the left side. Swanson clears it in front. He had Jody Crane going to the net. Crane couldn't catch up with it. The Flames still can't control it as Swanson has it on the left side boards. He will dump it behind the net, and now the Flames will touch it. That is Brody Keish. The Sockeyes are going on the power play. There's a look at number nine for the Richmond Sockeyes, Ryan, Ryan Dorahy. And we'll tell you that his statistics are, if I can find him on my score sheet. There he is. He's, he's way up high there. Seven goals, eight assists for 15 points and 10 penalty minutes. And there's a look at Steve Howe at number 19. That's the man that Pete Crowther was talking about. He needs to be neutralized for, for 60 minutes for them to win this game. An interesting stat on Steve Howitt. He's got two penalty minutes this season. He's not a guy that often visits the penalty box. Well, he's just not trying hard enough. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with you on that, Steve. I think he's just a disciplined player. Any, anybody can score goals, but taking penalties is something else. Sockeye's on the power play. They got Dean Dennis and Neil Robertson at the point. Playing up front, Steve Howitt. Jeff Overgaard and a new guy, Alex Zercher. He's from Switzerland, and he came to Canada to play some hockey. Close chance there in front. Howitt's got the puck in the left side corner. Back to the point to Robertson. Robertson over to Dean Dennis. Nice pass to Steve Howitt. Howitt in front, shoots, and a great save by Ziga Ivanic. He got his glove on it and robbed Howitt. Well, this is probably a good opportunity for us to introduce the Flames starting goalie, Ziga Ivanic. He, he arrived to the Flames about 10 days ago from the BC Junior A Hockey League Surrey Eagles. He was uh, first offered to Richmond, and then, then uh, the Flames decided to take him, and he's won both games so far for the Flames. So Pete Crowther's going with him. Off the faceoff, the Flames get it out right back into the Sockeyes' end. Varian Kirst leaves it there for Wade Bowley, who's now out there with Coy Myers at the point. The front line has not changed. Zercher clears it in. Overgaard on the left side. Puts it behind the net to Howitt. Howitt puts it to Overgaard. Overgaard now moves behind the net. Circles back. Looking for someone to pass to. He's checked there by Chris McCain. McCain gets the puck. Has a chance to clear it. Gets it to the right side boards. And then Darcy Frederick gets it to the line. Bowley with a long shot and the save by Ivanic. A low shot that Ivanic had no problems with. Back to the point. Coy Myers. Wrist shot. In on net. Another save by Ivanic. There is Zercher in front to try and deflect it in, but nothing happened. And Steve Howitt skates off as his shift comes to an end. 51 seconds left in the power play for the Sockeyes. 15-12 left here in the first period. It is scoreless between the Sockeyes and the Flames. Sockeyes make a line change. They've got Ivan Usyk with Brendan Wust. Actually, that's Hutchinson and Sean Tarr. It gets back to the point, but now comes out as Brandon Sung gets it over center ice and right behind the net. Neil Robertson takes it behind his own net. Robertson with the puck for the Sockeyes. Gets it up to Hutchinson. Hutchinson gets to center ice and then is checked and met by Brandon Sung. Brandon Sung dunks it back to center ice. Ivan Usyk has it and will clear it in. 28 seconds left in the power play. The Sockeyes really haven't had a lot of great chances here in this power play. Looking to get something done late. Hutchinson with the pat, the puck. Passes it over. Back to Hutchinson. It's deflected in front by the defenseman. That was Pete. It almost went into the net. It just trickled wide. Robertson keeps it in at the blue line. To Sean Tarr. To Ivan Usyk in the corner. 
Ivan Usyk leaves it for Robertson. Back to Ivan Usyk, to Dean Dennis. Dennis is being chased by the man out of the box and takes him down. No penalty there on the play as the Sockeyes still control in front to Ivan Usyk. He's got a chance to pass it in front. Can't get it to his teammate. And the Flames here have a great chance to get it out. They will. This could be icing. And it is icing. And it is icing as the Flames just clear it yeah. out to relieve the pressure. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Pete Crowther, uh, the head coach of the Ridgeville Flames, he also talked about uh, team discipline and that, that he needs his players to, to, you know, to stop taking penalties because uh, <clears throat> it's going to start it's going to start hurting them even though they're, they're in second place. They are the most penalized team in the league with 735 penalty minutes. Um, We'll just let you know that the Richmond Sockeyes have only 538 penalty minutes. And that's high also yeah. for any team to have that many penalty minutes yeah. this uh, early in the season. Yeah, and often, but often when you're good, you can, you can take penalties. And the Sockeyes are good. They're number one in the Pacific Junior International Hockey League. The Flames have the puck and just cleared out. They really haven't had many good scoring chances on Kirst at all tonight. The Sockeyes have basically controlled the beginning of this game. Dan Plant is in the corner for the Sockeyes. Gets it out to Jody Crane. Crane cry, tried to feed Dorohoy. Just missed him with the pass. Dorohoy back to Crane. Puts it out front to Plant. It's intercepted. Goes right back to the point. Gil Fillon tried to keep it in. And it just bounced over the blue line. The Sockeyes will have to regroup as the Flames bring it out. Comes a delayed two-line pass against the Flames. And we'll have another stoppage in play. 13-14 left here in the first period. Mm -hmm. It's scoreless between the top two teams in this league. Mm -hmm. And there's a look at number 91, Stu Trimble of the Ridge Meadows Flames. And we'll just uh, quickly take a look at his statistics. He has played 18 he has played 18 games. He's got 11 goals, 12 assists for 23 points and 20 penalty minutes. And he wins the faceoff. He does win the faceoff. John Paveo brings it over center ice and dumps it in. Virian Kirst is behind the net, took a tricky bounce off the boards and Kirst got his stick on it just in time as it was going right in front of the empty net. Nakatsura fighting with Darcy Pinch. The Sockeyes come up with the puck. That's Wade Boley. Mm -hmm. Boley up to Yule. Mm -hmm. Yule just lets it go and it'll come outside the Sockeyes end and Pete goes after it. Pete still with the puck over center ice. Mm -hmm. Boley's there to meet it. The blue line gets it up to Brad Swanson. Swanson's got Yule and Nakatsura with him. Puts it out in front to Nakatsura. It's deflected by Ivanik right to him. Sockeyes and the Flames fighting in the corner. Yule comes up with the puck, dumps it back behind the net. Swanson leaves it behind the net, puts it to the right side corner. Rob Yule there. Has Nakatsura behind the net. Nakatsura can't get to it. And here comes Darcy Pinch for the Flames. Tries to feed Benedictson. He couldn't get to him. This will be offside. If the Flames touch it, they don't. The Sockeyes get it out. Swanson's got a chance down the right side boards as he's met by Pete. And Pete will clear it down the ice right on net to Virian Kirst. Kirst is a great goaltender that knows how to control the puck with his stick. He's a third defenseman out there for the Sockeyes, and if you watch him tonight, you'll see him do that. He often acts as the third defenseman and plays the puck up to his forwards or his defenseman. Coy Myers meets his man. It's always nice when you've got a goaltender who's really good with the puck. Uh, Kirk McLean, he's, he's, he's known for his stick handling abilities with that big, awkward goalie go piece of lumber. He sure but, knows how to play with his stick. Yeah. You can be really effective for your team. It's Darcy Frederick. Watch this guy tonight. He's hot for the Flames. Leads the league in scoring. As Frederick deflects it up to center ice and over the Sockeyes blue line, Dean Dennis is there to meet Virian Kirst. Kirst thought it might have been icing, so he let it go. Dean Dennis has got the puck. Nice pass to Howitt. It was behind him, but Howitt ends up getting it anyways. Over the Flames blue line, leaves it for Zercher. Alex Zercher from Switzerland gets tied up and loses the puck. Now here's a chance for the Flames. That's number 15, Rod Algretto. Couldn't get to the puck before Robertson did. Now Robertson has it. Tried to keep it in and lost it. Here's a chance for Darcy Frederick. This guy can score. Watch Frederick. In on goal. Shoots. Hit the side of the net. Good chance for Frederick. Feeds it out in front. Here's another shot. Another great save by Varian Kirst. And this is the first time that Kirst has been tested. He's looked good. Here's a chance now for Steve Howitt down the right side. Tried to leave it for Hutchison. It got caught up in the defenseman's skate. The Flames fail to bring it out. Dean Dennis puts it behind the net in front for Howitt. Howitt couldn't get the bouncing puck as it bounced right over his stick and went over the blue line. Robertson regroups and tries to bring it back in. Chasing in after the puck, Jeff Corbett for the Flames. Number 99. 
Sockeyes. Babanusik, nice fake. Left it for Hutchinson, but it was offside, a two-line pass. The Sockeyes were really fortunate not to get scored on there. The, the puck uh, was, was just kind of trickling on the blue line there uh, at, at, in the uh, Ridge Meadows zone. And a couple of defense, one defenseman kind of skated by it and, and missed it. And then another defenseman committed to the puck, and mm -hmm. he had to make the play. And he, and he got caught up, and he missed the puck. He got caught up ice. And that created a, a two-on-one at about at about the center line. Very, very fortunate not to get scored on. Very encouraged yeah, was you, there. You just you just can't uh, pinch in like that early in a in, early in a scoreless game, or else you're going to get burned. That's Brandon Sung who had that chance earlier. Just shot it towards the net. It deflected funny, and Kirst had to be sharp. There's another chance in front, and again, Kirst was there to make the save as the puck went right in front of the crease and just hit him in the left pad. That's Brody Hutchinson with Gil Fillin. Gil Fillin hits his man, but the Flames keep with the puck. Number 77, Jim Wester had a shot on net. It just went wide. And I think we're going to get a penalty here against the Sockeyes. A little bit of interference in front of the net. Yeah. Now we'll get an opportunity to see the Ridge Meadows power play. It's Jeff Overgaard. Oh, no, that's it's, it's actually Gil Fillin going to the box. Here's the replay of that shot. And Kirst looked great on a beautiful save by Kirst. Stood his angles well, or covered his angles well, stood his ground and had made the save. Kirst is, if you've been following the Sockeyes this season, has, in my opinion, taken over the number one job from Ryan Dawes, who, who started the season. Uh, Dawes still gets quite a bit of playing time, but Kirst is, gets, just gets a bit more, and he's been their number one man. He's got a great goals against, and Kirst has been a great acquisition for the Sockeyes this season. 9.40 left in the first period. It's scoreless. The Sockeyes are killing a penalty here to Gil Fillon as he interfered in front of the net. So he was trying to take down his man. The Flames bring it into the Sockeyes' end, looking to connect on this power play. Behind the nets is Jeff Corbett. Back to the point. Shot blocked by Crane. A nice play by Crane to block that shot by number 44, Brody Keish. With the puck now is Tavis Eaton. He just dumps it into the line. It takes a funny bounce behind the net. Kirst couldn't stop it. Coy Myers has got it now. Clears it right to the point to Keish. Keish, nice pass over. Nice shot, scores! There's a goal. That's Stu Trimble as he just roofed it on Kirst. Kirst didn't have much of a chance as Trimble just walked in in the clear. He, he just had nobody on him. A great play by the Flames, and that's a power play goal. Yeah, it was good puck movement there. They, 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 they spread the Sockeyes out wide, worked their way to a good shot from the point, and the Flames have a 1-0 lead. We've Actually, just, that, that shot was more in the slot, I would say. We've just been made of a... Uh, a lineup change, made aware of a lineup change here for the Sockeyes. Take a look at the replay here. You can see it just is able, the Flame is able to skate into the slot and <clears throat> snap off that wrist shot past Varian Kirsch, and it's a 1 0 hockey game. I've been referring to number 14 as Rob Yule. It's not Rob Yule. He's not playing tonight. It's actually Russell Brew, and he's got the puck right now for the Sockeyes. Russell Brew in the right side corner. As there's a stoppage in play again for the Sockeyes. Stu Trimble got the goal for the Ridge Meadow Flames. They lead one to nothing here. A power play goal as Gil Fillon took an interference penalty. 8.30 left here in the first period. And there's a look at Russell Brewey as you're just talking there about lineup changes. He won't be on the lineup. But Russell Brew has not played for the Sockeyes yet this season. Yeah. Rob Yule usually wears number 14. He's been wearing it all season, all season long. Mm -hmm. And now it's Russell Brew. Sockeyes have the puck in the Flames end. Robertson over to Dean Dennis. Dennis passed it to Hutchinson. Hutchinson couldn't control it. And the Flames get the puck behind their own net. That's Chris McCain fighting with Sean Tarr. And the Sockeyes get the puck. That's Ivan Usyk. Big shot. Nice save by Ivanic. And Ivanic has looked good. I. Ivan Usyk had a great chance to bury one. Mm -hmm. He was in all alone, but Ivanic cut down the angles, didn't give him anything to shoot at. Buck just hits him, and he smothers it. You take a look, take a look at the replay here. Ivan Usyk moves in. It's kind of a snapshot. 
Ivan Usyk's got the puck off the faceoff, takes a light wrist shot wide of the net. Ivanik's there to clear the puck to the other side. Ivan Usyk chases after it, gets there, so does Dean Dennis. Ivan Usyk ends up with the puck. He's got Hutchinson on the right side, or the left side, and Tar, Tar back to Ivan Usyk. Ivan Usyk puts it rink wide to Hutchinson. Hutchinson, nice shot, the rebound, he had another shot and it just went wide. Hutchinson picked that pass out of the air. Great skill by Hutchinson there to show that he could pick a puck right out of the air. Great, great shot as well as he got that pass. Sockeyes control the puck behind their own net, Dean Dennis. Sockeyes would love to get that goal back. Dennis makes a move at center ice, just gets around Dan Tall. Dennis, bad pass, intercepted. That's Brandon Sung, but Robertson gets back and gets the puck back for the Sockeyes. Yeah, Sockeye, Tried to... Richmond's having problems setting up, uh, setting up the power play. They're getting, they're getting stopped at the center line in the blue line. And as you can see, the Flames managed to clear it again. That's good penalty killing by, the, by Ridge Meadows. Wade Bowley now at the point for the Sockeyes. Tried to feed Jeff Overgaard, and he missed him with the pass, and the Flames will again clear it the length of the ice. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Crosley, the coach of the Richmond Sockeyes, is not going to be happy with this power play. Wade Bowley fighting in the corner. Ends up losing the puck. That is Chris Pinch, his first game tonight with the Ridge Meadow Flames. Yeah. Pinch loses control, mm -hmm. and the Sockeyes bring it out. And you're not seeing double. That's uh, his twin brother, Darcy Pinch, number nine. Here comes a penalty against the Flames on a delayed shot. Jeff Overgaard blasts it right by Ivanic, and it's 1-1. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there was a delayed penalty as well being called, just as Overgaard was lifting his stick. Well, there won't be a need for the uh, penalty anymore. As uh, Ziga Ivanic shakes his head, he's wondering what, what happened there. Is he probably had a pretty good look at it. He just couldn't, st couldn't stop it. Hope we get a replay on that. And... Overgaard had a slow start to this season. He's really turned it on in the last five, six, seven games. There he shows again. He's got a great shot. He just nailed it from the point. Blew it right by Ivanic. That's Overgaard's 12th goal of the season. 6.25 left in the first period. The Sockeyes tie this game up at one. And you see, he just, he just fired that shot. <clears throat> Pulled the trigger from, uh, from the point. All the goalie could do was pull it out of the net. That's right. Sweep it out of the net. It's that not was a good feeling either. How would you know? When did you ever play goal? I played goalie when I, I played a lot of road hockey, a lot of street hockey. I played a lot of goal when I was younger. And it felt bad when you got scored on oh, playing man. road hockey? Oh, it did. I was quite competitive. <laughs> and I got scored on quite a bit. That's why I only played road hockey. Dorohoy's got the puck. We'll get it over the blue line, and that's it as the Flames were there to meet him. Number 88, Ron Benedictson. Leaves it for Keish behind his net. Keish has a little trouble with it as Dorohoy was forechecking. Benedictson's got it now. Bring it up to Keish. Dorohoy again almost picked up a loose pass. And this will be a two-line pass, and the puck will come back inside the Flames end. Uh, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> the Ridge Meadows Flames are in a pinch, as you can see. <laughs> That's number nine, Darcy Pinch. And joining Darcy just a couple of weeks ago is his... Uh, twin brother Chris Pinch who's playing who's number 10 now, now there's a look at Pete Crowler he's the coach of the Ridge Meadows Flames now he said uh, those two played together on the Flames I believe it was last year or the year before but uh, they're not playing together right now Darcy is playing on the number two line and Chris is just they're just sort of working him into the lineup right now McLean's got the puck for the Sockeyes we'll try to get it to Swanson Swanson couldn't handle it the puck goes behind the net that's John Paveo. Clears it around the boards to Rod Algretto. Algretto with the puck. Tried to feed his man. It went by him. The Sockeyes clear it back into the Flames end. Clint McLean with the puck. Over the blue line for the Sockeyes. He's got two guys with him. Brad Swanson just couldn't catch up to the pass. As the puck goes into the, swarner, the corner, Swanson actually gets to it and dumps it around the right side. Puck goes right back to the point. Clint McLean keeps it in, and now the Flames will get it out. That's Darcy Frederick. He'll clear it right into the Sockeyes' end. Chris Gilfillan 
Up to Swanson. Swanson failed to pass it out. That's Rob Marion. Marion takes a shot, deflected high over top of the net. Marion Kirsch saw it all the way. McLean behind his own net. Shoots it around the board to Jesse Nakatsura. Nakatsura makes a nice little stick move to get by his man, but can't get out of his own end. A flickering shot to the net. Kirst was there to stop it. Sockeye's having trouble in their own end, and here comes the penalty against Brew Russell. Yeah. He tripped up number 10, what did Chris you say? Pinch. Did you say Brew Russell? Oh, I said Russell <laughs> Brew. I did say Brew Russell. Hey, I be, I'll, get, I'll get it on the replay. Yeah, I did. I, I did. I'll admit it. <laughs> yeah, Russ Brew, number 14 of the Richmond Sockeyes. He's going to be going to uh, take a seat in the penalty box there. You could see him. He, he hauled down a Flames player <clears throat> out in front of the goal. And the Flames will once again go on the power play. A little bit of frustration by the Sockeyes. They really can't seem to get anything going tonight so far. And that resulted in this penalty here. Take a look at the replay. Oh, he just nailed. <clears throat> That's Chris, Chris Pinch. Pr he just nailed Chris Pinch from the back with a cross check. I thought it was a trip, but as we see the replay, it was definitely not a trip. <laughs> yeah. Is that, did they call it a trip? No, I called it a trip okay. before, before I, I saw the replay. We don't know what they've called yet. We'll wait for the announcers. In Russ Brew... Two minutes for interference. Time of the call, 15.08. So interference is the call. The Flames have scored on their first power play, looking to score on this one. Benedictson's got it behind the net, leaves it for the point. That's Keish. Keish at the point, winds up, shoots, hit the post. Keish hit the post from the blue line. Nice shot. And the Flames looking to make a 2-1 score here. Back to the point. That's Tavis Eaton. He lost control of it. Here comes Ivan Usyk. Ivan Usyk looking for Plant, couldn't find him, and Ivan Usyk lost the puck. That's Stu Trimble. He scored the first goal for the Flames tonight. Puck gets to the blue line, kept in by Darcy Pinch. Flames fighting for it along the left side boards. Goes back to the point to Tavis Eaton. Eaton feeds it right to Dan Plant. And Plant almost nailed the linesman as he cleared it the length of the ice. Ivanic clears it up to Stu Trimble. Nice pass by the goaltender. Stu Trimble gets to center ice and has to stop there. He leaves it for Keish. Keish, left side to Darcy Pinch. Pinch leaves it for Trimble. And right now, you got to say that the Flames have got a bit of an edge in play. Yes, they're on the power play, but they're connecting with their passes more than the Sockeyes are. Back to the point to Keish. Overgaard is watching him. Shot on net. Easy save for Kirst. And here comes a penalty to the Ridge Meadow Flames, and this will end the power play for the Flames. And I didn't see the infraction. I'm hoping that the, our replay picked it up. Just like out of nowhere, the referee stuck, uh, stuck up his hand and blew the whistle. Well, now we know why these two teams are the most penalized teams in the league. Yeah. They, they're getting called even when we don't see it. So it's uh, Darcy Pinch who's going off for the Ridge Meadows Flames. And so the Sockeyes will get a power play of a minute and, hope my math is right, 19 seconds. Okay, here... Here's a look at the replay. See oh, that's the one that rang off the post. Great shot. Kirsch just, just missed it, and he's lucky he's got that metal pipe behind him. That was like a Randy Johnson fastball. <laughs> Ridge Metal Flames win the faceoff. John Paveo takes it back into his own end, passes it, right in, passes it right across in front of his own goalie. The Flames bring it out to center ice and get stopped there. Dorohoy with the puck, tried to feed Hutchinson. Hutchinson didn't see it. The Flames just dump it right back out. Dean Dennis has got it at center ice. Dennis. Almost lost it. Now circles back into his own end. Leaves it for Robertson. Robertson for Dorohoy. Dorohoy down the right side. Feeds it to Hutchison. Nice pass. Hutchison goes for the short side. And a nice save by Ivanic. He just hugged the post and stopped the puck. Hutchison went for that short side. Nice shot. Nice pass by Dorohoy. 3.02 left here in the first period. This game is tied at one between the Ridge Meadow Flames and the Richmond Sockeyes. Yeah, this, so far this game has lived up to its billing. It's, uh, it's, it's been close, tight checking, uh, some good scoring chances by other teams, some great goaltending so far, and it's still a tight 1-1 hockey game with three minutes, two seconds left in the first period, first stanza. It's Steve Howitt, Dean Dennis, Jeff Overgaard, and Neil Robertson out for the Sockeyes. As the Sockeyes now go on the power play for a minute 19. And you were right, Steve, good mathematics there. Sockeye's in their own end. Dean Dennis gets checked hard it by Frederick. A, it was a struggle, but I barely passed Algebra 12. That was it for me. Robertson gets it up to Dorohoy. Or actually make that Alex Zercher. Zercher leaves it back for... Drops a pass to Overgaard. Overgaard on the left side back to Zercher behind the net. Passed it back to Overgaard. 
Back to Zercher. Zercher's got Dennis at the point, gets it to him, puts it back to Zercher. Alex Zercher from Switzerland brings it out in front. Nice shot. Blocker saved by Ivanic. The Flames get it to the point. Not out. Robertson over to Dennis. Dennis back to Robertson. Robertson to Zercher. Nice passing here by the Sockeyes in front. Howitt. Shot is blocked. The Flames can't clear it out. Dennis keeps it in as he fumbles with the puck. Dennis gets tripped. No penalty called as he was tripped right at the blue line by number eight, Rob Marion. Marion tripped up Dennis. No call. Marion's got the puck now for the Flames. 15 seconds left in the power play. Sockeyes have got one last chance. Here comes Howitt. Makes a nice move at the line. Howitt winds up, hit the side of the net. Looked like he might have burned it by him, but it hit the side of the outside of the net. That was a good move on defenseman Jamie Worcester. Uh, Howitt just kind of um, <clears throat> hesitated to the, to the left and then went right and he uh, completely undressed him. Howitt misses a pass by Boley. Sorry, he faked to the left and then went to the right. This will be icing. Against the Sockeyes, only 120 left here in the first period. It's a 1-1 hockey game. And that's Brody Kitch, number 44 of the Ridge Meadows Flames. And let's see if we can find his statistics. Where is I can't find them. Oh, there he is. Where is he? He's got six goals, 10 assists, 16 points. There he is. What would I do without you? Stu Trimble there to take the face off again against Brad Swanson. Swanson is kicked out. In comes Nakatsura. Crucial face off in the Sockeyes end. The Sockeyes win the draw. Bowley's there with the puck, fighting with Benedictson. Benedictson gets it behind the net, tried to center it, didn't get there. Trimble. Nakatsura clears it around the behind the net to Coy Myers. Myers dumps it out over the blue line, over center ice, and this will go right on net to Ziga Ivanic. Ivanic clears it sloppily. Swanson almost intercepted it. And we've just entered the last minute of play in the first period. As the Flames cleared out, Bowley's got a chance to stop Marion, and he does. Swanson now has the puck. Both teams look like they just want out of this first period. Content to just get over center ice and dump it in. Well, you don't There's want a to chance do it. for the Sockeyes in front. It's kicked by the defenseman almost right to the net. Well, you don't want to make a careless mistake and find yourself down, down two to one. There's another great chance for the Sockeyes. Now they look like they want to get out of this period with a lead. As they fight behind the net. Coming up with it is Nakatsura. Puts it right out in front. A chance here for Swanson. He couldn't get his stick on the puck. Puts it back to Myers. 15 seconds left in the first period. The Sockeyes now pressing. Swanson puts it in Nakatsura. He tried to one-time it and missed it. Here comes a penalty. This will go against the Flames. So the Sockeyes will have 10 seconds left in this period to be on the power play. And if they don't score, they'll start the second period with one. I want to remind you to stay tuned. Steve Braberman will be interviewing Jeff Crosley after this period. Always interesting to uh, hear what Steve and Jeff have to talk about. Our regular segment. It's always nice to be able to talk to a coach, like right in the middle of a game to find out, you know, how, how, it, how it's going because he sees much more <laughs> than we could ever see, you know, from behind the bench. Sockeyes have got Hutchison out there with Boley and Myers at the point on the wings. Sean Tarr and Ivan Usyk. Hutchison loses the draw to Marion and the Ridge Flames will turn around on the right side. Four, Tavis Eaton. Two minutes for slashing. Time of the call, 19.50. That is the first period of play. The Sockeyes and the Ridge Meadow Flames are tied at one. Sloppy first period. Uh, no, I, I don't think it was a sloppy first period. I think that there was a there was a lot of tight checking in that first period. We saw the teams exchange some penalties. We saw the teams obviously exchange goals, and uh, this is this is probably just how how, how both teams ex expected this game would unfold. Um, Pete Crowther knew knew going into the game that he was going to have to try and uh, contain Steve Howitt, um, the uh, Sockeyes' leading scorer, and and uh, there was evidence to that. You know, and uh, I think in the first minute of the game, when when, when Howard had that uh, uh, partial breakaway opportunity, got that good good shot off. And I believe 
believe Jeff Crosley is working his way up. And I, we should take the, I should take we should take this opportunity to say you know congrats you're doing a good job there, uh, Mark. This is this is your play by hockey play by play debut oh, here. Yes. You've never done it before. I haven't done it before, so I'm having fun. It's a little tough, but I'm having fun. Uh, thanks for joining us there, Jeff. How are you doing? Good, good, thanks. Good. We're gonna have to uh, share microphones here. The uh, the uh, gremlins are uh, are at it again. But uh, Mark and I were just talking about uh, the way that this game is unfolding, and it's and it's just as you would expect. It's it's tight checking, a uh, few penalties here and there, and it's not surprising that it's a, a tight 1-1 hockey game after the first period. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty evenly played uh, first period. Thought we had pretty good uh, pretty good jump in the first 10 minutes or so, which is a good sign for us. We don't usually start that quick. And um, yeah, like you say, they got a power play goal, and we've got, uh, I'm not sure if ours was, or uh, pretty close to being a power play goal, I think. And, uh, you know, it, two good teams. And uh, we're going to look at goal number one here. If you could take us through it, as, as you saw it, uh, from your perspective as a coach. Yeah, I think we just dropped the puck here to Jeff Overgaard. He's got a big shot, and he uh, he let a great low shot go and uh, beat the goaltender to the uh, glove side, I believe. That, that actually, that goal salvaged what what was a very uh, dis disappointing uh, power play. You were having a lot of troubles uh, getting 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 past the center line and the blue line, and it looked like uh, it was just going to, uh, um, <clears throat> you weren't going to be able to convert into a goal, and then boom, one nothing. Yeah, we um, normally we have pretty good success getting the puck set up, and uh, our problem, if anything, on the power play seems to be that our, our defensemen don't want to shoot it very often, and we, uh, especially uh, Dean Dennis and Neil Robertson, they tend to hold it and make... Uh, little bit too pretty of plays up top and it's kind of high risk maneuvers as well and uh, you know sometimes the best uh, the best thing to do is to shoot and get guys going to the net and uh, Jeff let a nice shot go there. Now well, the guys down in the truck are performing great we got goal number two coming up right here Jeff this is this is the the Flames goal. Yeah we uh, we had a breakdown here in our defense you'll we'll see number three and number 17 both take guys in front of the net or maybe we'll see it there we are they're both taking guys in front and uh, we didn't stop the puck coming off the wall and um, you know really dumb. They had, bugs me to look at it actually <laughs> well you know you're, you're a coach you got to look at these things and, and, and you got to analyze them uh, one, one last thought this is a, I don't know I mean um, this is a big game obviously for the Ridge Meadow Flames are one point behind you they can win this game and uh, they, they leap past you guys um, you guys are obviously are aware of that <clears throat> and I don't know what are your thoughts on that uh, are they I, I think it's um, personally I I see it as one of 40 games and uh, you know we got a point lead on them right now we got a couple games in hand so really the important column to look at is the loss column and we only got two and they got four so uh, you know yeah, I mean if they win tonight I mean to think that after uh, after 17 games we'd have three losses I'd be pretty happy so uh, it's just another game in our team's development and um, Hopefully, uh, you know, come second half of the season, we'll be uh, we'll be ready to play. Yeah, it looks like that uh, that you and you and the original Flames are going to be battling all all season at the top of the standings, eh? Uh, along with Poco, I think. I mean, Poco's uh, only got four losses as well, and they haven't had a couple of their best players playing all that much. So, um, I I don't think we're uh, the favorite right now. I mean, I, I look at Poco and Ridge Meadows both as having uh, uh, maybe stronger clubs than ours. So we'll see what happens. Well, so much for league parity. There you go. We Thanks a lot, Jeff, for joining us. No monkey business today at all, and uh, and good luck in the next two periods. Thank you. It's the Richmond Sockeyes 1, the Richmond Flames 1. It's all tied up after one period. We'll have the second period after this. Welcome back to the Mineru Arena. It's 1-1 after one period. Tie hockey game. The Sockeyes on the power play to start this period. A minute 42 left. The Sockeyes have got the puck in their own end. That's Coy Myers. Myers passes it up to Jody Crane. Nice pass. He gains the blue line. Leaves it for Plant. Plant with a shot. And I'm Vanek. Makes the stop. Great play so far for the Sockeyes. Good rush. Yeah, and, and as, as, as we uh, begin the second period, the, the Ridge Meadows Flames have, them, have a fire to put out in their own. Huh? Nice puck movement, just drops it back, gets a good shot off. Yeah, good save there by Ziga Ivenik of the Ridge Meadows Flames. 
Back to the point, the Sockeyes have got the puck, Wade Boley. Boley with a nice wrist shot, shoots, hit the post, the rebound for Plant, he can't bury it, Ivanic is there, oh man, how did Plant miss that? Uh, well, Plant, <coughs> Plant's going to be losing some sleep tonight, he's going to be going over that one again and again. He had a wide open net with <coughs> Ivanic lying on the ground on his side, completely, completely out of the play altogether, we can take a look at the replay. Ooh, right that's here. what we're, oh yes. Got the right pad up. Yeah. And just burned Plant. Yeah. Plant had a glorious scoring opportunity. Boy, he could have drained it there and just couldn't get it by Ivanic. Yeah. Ivanic's looked good tonight. Crane wins the faceoff back to Coy Myers. Myers, left side. Holds the puck. Now passes it. Bounces high. Sockeyes keep control. Myers puts it deep into the end, but it's stopped there by number seven, Chris McCain, and the puck is cleared down the ice. Varian Kirst stops it for the Sockeyes. Foley gives chase. Kirst made a tricky little play. It worked for him. Yeah, very in injudicious, very injudicious play there by, by Varian Kirst, the Sockeyes goalie. He was kind of lackadaisical with the puck and threw it out in front. Dan Plant gets it to Crane. Sloppy center ice hockey by both teams here. And that's Dan Tall. Tall will clear it down the ice. Varian Kirst stops it behind the net, shoots it around to Dan Plant on the right side. Plant feeds it up to Dorohoy. Dorohoy tries to get around his man. He's hauled down. No penalty as Dorohoy was hauled down to the ice. He was going after that puck. And we, we've seen a, seen a bit of that loosey-goosey play there in the, in the neutral zone. Uh, players skating past pucks, not even getting a stick on it. These are usually pretty tight, even uh, at, uh, in the, between the blue lines <clears throat> at this uh, Junior B level of hockey. 13 seconds left in the power play for the Sockeyes. A lot of center ice hockey. The Sockeyes having a tough time getting things going. Swanson's got it now as the Sockeyes make a change. Swanson puts it back to the point. Wade Boley wasn't there. It'll come back outside the blue line. The Sockeyes have got to regroup. So, yeah, it's been a combination of, uh, <clears throat> of loosey-goosey hockey and tight checking here that's resulted in only uh, a total of 11 shots altogether in the first period. Uh, <clears throat> no, that would be 13 shots. That's altogether right. in, the, in, the, in the first period because two of those shots went in. Um, <clears throat> Varian Kirsch for the Sockeyes made five saves and Ivanic for the Flames made six. And on the scoring, Overgaard scored for the Sockeyes assisted by Alex Zurcher from Switzerland. He's, he's here playing hockey and by Wade Boley for the Ridge Meadow Flames, Stu Trimble from Keish and Benedictson. 1-1 one, one. after one period, 17-51 left in the second period. Sockeyes lose the draw. Robertson's got the puck. Dumps it to the line, not out, kept in. A nice shot on net. Kirst didn't see it to the last second, but it didn't matter. It went by him, by the net. Robertson gets the puck now. Clears it right up. Lead pass to Howitt. Howitt couldn't catch up to it. Oh, that would have been sweet. Mm -hmm. He would have been all alone. Overgaard's got the puck right side. Lost it. Here comes Benedictson. Benedictson down the left side. Dumps it in over the blue line. Kirst is there to stop it. Kirst will backhand it. There's what I was talking about. He knows how to use his stick. Great stick handler for a goalie. Mm -hmm. Gets it up to Zercher. Zercher to Overgaard over the blue line. And that's as far as Overgaard would go. The Flames dump it back out. Dean Dennis has it in his own end. Yeah, both teams now at even strength here. Five on five. <clears throat> Dean it's Dennis. Tight 1-1 one -one hockey game. His pass was intercepted by Trimble. Trimble gets hit hard by Zercher. Nice hit by Zercher. The guy from Switzerland didn't know they could hit that hard. Shot from the left side goes right around. Robertson keeps it in. Yeah. Overgaard dumps it back to the point, and the Flames bring it out. Yeah, them Europeans, they're used to that non-contact hockey. Yeah, he made a nice hit. Here's a chance for Marion. Nice shot, nice save by Kirst, and here comes the delayed penalty. This is going to go against the Sockeyes. With 16.36 left here in the second period, 1-1 one, one hockey game. And we see... <coughs> Can't quite see the number on his shirt. Number eight. It's That's number eight a, of Zercher. Yeah, he's Zurcher. getting rough. This guy from Switzerland. He's throwing his body around. Yeah. What did he get called for? Yeah, Here's right. here could be the penalty right here. Still don't see it. That's Still don't see it. No. Not yet. Well, that's, that's the, it. That's the hit. That's the hit. I don't know if that's what he got called for, but that was definitely the hit that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Zercher using his body. Yeah. Just. Well. Well, the Canadians are teaching them how to play hockey. That's right. That's Ivan hockey, Us eh? <laughs> Ivan Usyk out to kill the penalty with Dan Plant, Gil Fillon, and McLean. Ivan Usyk went the into the boards hard. Two minutes for hooking. 
At 324. So the penalty was hooky. That, the replay that we saw was not the actual penalty. Nope. Zercher went off for hooking. And here comes another penalty to the Sockeyes. The Sockeyes are going to go two men down. This could be crucial for the Sockeyes. And this will be a two-man advantage for a minute 37. Lots of time. Yeah, this, this will be a real test for uh, Jeff Crosley and his uh, power play. <clears throat> his, uh, for his penalty killers. Obviously it goes off. Marion Ivanusek goes off. <clears throat> his, his girlfriend corrected us before the game. We, we've been calling him Marion. We're walking to the booth and she grabs Steve by the arm and says, Hey, <clears throat> you're calling my boyfriend the wrong name. Smarten up. It's not Marion, it's Marion. Well, a restraining order to take care of that next. Yeah. <laughs> She'll know better next time. Yeah, she won't fool with you. Yeah. Throw the her in the back of a paddy wagon. The Ridge Meadow Flames on the power play. There are two men down. Virian Kirst has fallen behind the net. A chance here for the Flames, but they couldn't capitalize. Marion now with the puck. Circles back. Passes it across. That's Tavis Eaton. Looks to wind up. Fakes the pass over to Keish. Keish shoots. Just wide of the net that hit the outside of the post. Keish now back at the point. He got his own slap shot. Over to Eaton. Eaton one-timed it. And it was a bit too hard for him. He couldn't accept the pass. Eaton gets the puck back, though. Brings it right back to the top of the blue line. Walks in. Shoots. High shot. And it's blocked by Frederick. He got in the way of Eaton's shot. Behind the net to Marion. Marion now. Left side. Brings it in. Wrist shot. Blocked by Gil Fillon. Frederick gets it. Back to Marion. To the point to Eaton. Eaton winds up. Fakes the pass. Puts it over to Keish. Keish wrist shot. Blocked there by McLean. It hit his skate. Flames showing great control. That's Keish. In the slot. Puts it out in front. Deflected just wide of the net. Here's a chance now for Plant to clear it. He's in the right side corner. Stops and got nailed from behind. Oh my. Big hit on Dan Plant. And Plant is down. This should be a five minute major for boarding. Yeah. He nailed Plant from behind. Yeah, and if it's a five-minute major for boarding or a check from behind, uh, whoever got whoever is tagged with the infraction will be gone for the game. I don't like seeing that kind of stuff. That is scary hockey. Okay, here's a look at the replays and see how, how it develops. <clears throat> we may not see the... Mm, no, we're not no. going to see the hit there on that play. Unless they... This is our camera way in the other end of the rink. A great shot. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have a we don't have a this shot. This is where it happens. Here it comes, right here. Just saw the tail end of it. I wonder how they're going to call this. I hope we can back that up again. If they're and see even going to call it at all, um, Steve, if you look at the box, the box door isn't even open. Okay. Great control Good. by yeah. the Flames, though. They were just passing it around, tic tac toe. Here it should be right now. There it is. Boom. There, number twelve. It was more of an elbow. <clears throat> Darcy Frederick on plant. And here comes the head referee, Remnick. He's going to make a call yeah. on that hit. The, the, the league <clears throat> officials, well, the league really has to, has to crack down on this sort of thing. Because, and, and that's why they toss a player out for taking a, a five-minute you know, five major for, for checking from behind. It's just there, dangerous. Yeah, well, there's a kid named uh, Paul Alexander who was playing for the Grandview Steelers a few years ago. And he took a nasty check from behind, and he's now a, a quadriplegic. Plant, and it's a good thing he's up and walking. Just look at uh, Sockeye Faithful. Nah, maybe a few Ridge Meadow Faithful as well. Good who, crowd out tonight. Made the trip out from uh, my neck of the woods. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, not quite. I'm Port Moody, but I like to consider myself <clears throat> part of the Fraser Valley now. Now it would be quite a quite a uh, a lift for the for the Sockeyes if they can kill off this um, <clears throat> two-man advantage. And you know what? It'll devastate the the Flames bench. I was playing in a hockey game on the weekend with my hockey team, and we had a two man a, a lengthy two-man advantage. We put out our five best players. We said, you know, us grunts. You know, we said, okay, let's sit down. We need a goal. Go out there. We put out our five best players. And they and and that unit failed to score. And I tell you, we were you know they come back to the bench and you just start yelling at each other and screaming mm -hmm. and telling each other you're we're, you know you're playing like garbage and stuff. It, it just just it's very I mean, damaging to the bench. I mean, interested to hear what the call is going to be. Yeah. Um, they've got two minutes up on the board. Although I would think there would be more for that. I guess Red the ref didn't see it. Here it is. On number twelve, Darcy Frederick. A two-minute minor for checking from behind in a game misconduct. Right. Game misconduct. Penalty being served by number eight, Rob Marion. Well, that's the right call. 
Remnick made the right call. Two minutes and a game. You just can't hit like that. The no. Flames have got the puck in the Sockeye's end. Here's a chance for a shot. He shot it right across, tried to feed Eaton. Just went wide. Jody Crane will get it out. And out of the box comes Zucher. And, 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 and uh, the Sockeyes lose. That was Darcy Frederick that was tossed, right? That's yeah. right. And the, so, so the, the, the Ridge Meadows Flames, they lose... Uh, their, their number their, one man. Yeah, their leading scorer then, who, who happens, who's also the league leading scorer with, with 19 goals, 15 assists. That's a stupid play by yeah. Frederick, and he will be shaking his head in the dressing room right now. Yeah, Can't and, be and, happy with that. And, and we'll see if that factors into the outcome of this game. Tavis Eaton with the puck, shoots it. It's deflected high over top of the net. Mm. That's Sean Tarr battling with Trimble. Mm. Tarr gets the puck, has a chance to get it out. Mm. He'll get it to the blue line, not out. Here's a shot from the point. It's stopped in Crane skates. Jody Crane up to Zucher. Zucher, nice pass over to Sean Tarr. Tarr couldn't really get it, now has it. Avoids a check. In the right side corner. That was number six, John Paveo, that knocked Tar. Tar still has it. Gets it behind the net to Avanusic. Marian Avanusic. Back to the point to Bowley. Bowley's got Swanson on the right side, and he had. Oh, Trimble had a great chance to clear out and skated right over top of the puck. Good chance for Trimble. He has to remember to pick up the puck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tri Trimble, Trimble was already skating in past the blue line yeah. on a breakaway. <laughs> Yeah, he 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 visualized it. He thought about it. He knew it was going to happen, and and he, and he forgot one thing, and that was the puck, okay. the most important thing. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Talk, let's get back to talking about Darcy Frederick, who's the league's leading scorer. You know, with uh, 13 minutes, 14 seconds left in the second period of a 1-1 hockey game. You know, Darcy Frederick is good for at least one goal oh, and definitely. one assist each game. So you know you t you take that away right now, and 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 we don't and you know the the Flames just might not have enough um, <clears throat> on the score sheet for them to win this game without him. Crowther's got to be upset with Frederick, and I'm sure he'll have a talk with him, a yeah. nice talk with him after the game, or maybe in between this period mm -hmm. and the third. Dean Dennis for the Sockeyes over his own line brings it over center ice, winds up, shoots it right on net. It's deflected mm -hmm. by Jamie Worcester wide of the net. Swanson goes in after it. Swanson, left side, puts it behind the net. A chance out in front for the Sockeyes. Here's a chance. What a save by Ivanic. He robbed Swanson. That's the second rob by Ivanic tonight. Second in this period. He has been hot. Someone call 911. We got a thief here. Overguard had a chance in front. Robertson keeps it in. Howitt, who just fed Swanson for that great chance. Swanson did wait a bit long, though. If we get a chance to watch the replay, he should have one-timed it. He didn't. Ivanic had enough time to get over and make the save. Yeah, but sometimes when you one time it, you, you, I mean, you, you can't get enough on, on the stick. You're taking a chance, you know, by hurrying, hurrying the shot. Here's a chance for Howitt. Howitt down the left side. Goes back into the middle, makes a nice move. Howitt in on goal. Low shot saved by Ivanic. <laughs> Didn't really get a good shot on net, yeah. but a nice move by Howitt to make that play even happen. Yeah. Ooh, there's a big hit between Swanson and Brandon Sung of the... Ridge Meadow Flames, both of them went down. Sung lost his stick. Mm -hmm. Dean Dennis has got the puck now. Yeah. Nice pass up to Hutchison. Hutchison feeds Howitt. Hutchison with the puck, winds up, shoots high. Blocker saved by Ivanic. Hutchison gets the puck behind the net. Puts it in front to Howitt, a great shot. Another good save by Ivanic. He's been there. He's standing tall tonight. He could be the difference in tonight's game. Yeah, and the Sockeyes are really starting to pepper some shots on him. <clears throat> Flames yeah, trying the, to the, yeah the Flames are going to have to try and tighten up a little bit defensively. They're getting caught on the uh, on the on the transition. They got to cool down these Sockeyes somehow. They are just flying. Great second period so far for the Sockeyes. Eaton with a shot deflected in front by Trimble. Great save by Kirst. He had to be smart to stop that one. Good play by Kirst to stop that deflected shot. Myers left side clears it right back to the point. Shot on net by number 66, Mike Pete. It's deflected and just trickled wide of the net. The Sockeyes clear the puck. This will be icing against the Sockeyes. Yeah. And getting back to Frederick, he's all he's, he's no stranger to the penalty box either, actually. He's uh, he does have 37 penalty minutes. I mean, the Sockeyes leading scorer in uh, Steve Howitt, he has only got two penalty minutes. <laughs> That's amazing. Two penalty minutes. And Howitt is an aggressive hockey player. He's a guy that goes for it. You'd think he'd have a couple more penalty minutes than that. Well, he's the kind of guy who draws penalties. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a really good point, actually. Okay, there's a good save by <clears throat> Ivanic. And the Sockeyes work their way out of the zone, and we're about to get back to live action. 
with Mark Patrick of AM600 calling your play-by-play. -play. Ryan Dorahoy down the right side, speeds by Pete. Can't get to the net, though. Puts it right back. A nice pass. Puts it to McLean. McLean dumps it back to Dorahoy in the end boards. Dorahoy gets hit there, and the Flames third to the blue line, not out. Nice glove stop by McLean to Jody Crane. Crane's looked good tonight. I like the way he's played. Crane, right side. He gets hit to the boards and off the puck. Here's a chance for the Flames to clear it. That's Chris Pinch, and he'll get it out. Sockeyes nail it right back in. Gil Fillin. Ivanix there to play it up. This player wasn't ready for it. Pete didn't know he was going to do that. Yeah. Now Dan Plant's got it behind the net. Yeah, the Sockeyes are really effectively forechecking. They're, uh, they're getting in there deep. They're, 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 they're forcing the, the Flame defenseman to make passes. Here's Dorohoy with a big shot. Another save by Ivanik. Sockeyes pressuring. This has been all their period here in the second. Flip McLean, nice pass to Dorohoy in front. His shot was blocked. He didn't really get a, a lot of time to shoot it. A big hit behind the play on Dorohoy. No penalty. Here comes the Flames. That's Ryan Baltzer. Just dumps it in. Now Zercher with the puck. Actually, Dorohoy up to Plant. Plant's got Jody Crane. Tried to feed him. Crane didn't see it, and Crane went off for a change. Dan Plant still out there. Goes after it. Brandon Sung. Puts it behind the net to Eaton. Here's a chance in front for the Sockeyes. Big shot by Dan Plant. Just went wide. Tar centers it in front dangerously. Puck is bouncing. Plant gets it now. Plant, right side, puts it back behind his back to Nakatsura. He's nailed there by Chris McCain. And the Flames, feeling the pressure, dump it the length of the ice. And they, they should almost take a timeout here. The Sockeyes <laughs> are all over them. 9.05 left here in the second period. It is 1-1. The Sockeyes and the Ridge Meadow Flames, the two top teams in the Pacific Junior International Hockey League. Yeah, and that could change tonight, of course, uh, for those of you who are just joining us. They're only one point apart. But if so it does, the Sockeyes still have two games in hand. Yeah. <clears throat> we got a young... Uh, possibly a couple of uh, future Sockeyes there? You never know. Mm -hmm. He looked good in the intermission. Mm -hmm. He was out there on the ice. Sean Tarr, left side, dumps it in. He'll be called here for a high stick as he touched the puck above the shoulders. Yeah, There's some rough stuff here. That's, I'm going to get it right, Russell Brew going with Chris McCain. I don't know why I want to call him Brew Russell, but it just seems to flow better. They had a little rough stuff and a little words. Nothing yeah, yeah. came of it. I I've known lots of people over the years named Brew. <laughs> there's, a, there's a look at uh, Jeff Crosley there of... Head coach of the Richmond Sockeyes. He's sporting a, a goatee now. Looking pretty good. Yeah. Tough guy. And uh, when he's when he's not uh, <clears throat> the bench boss there for the Richmond Sockeyes, he works in sales for Glenmore Printing. Give his company a bit of a plug there. That's Ron Algretto trying to bring it into the Sockeyes' end. as a tough time as he's held up by some Sockeye defensemen. Here comes Clint McLean over his own blue line. Gaining he, center ice. And uh, just to... For people who are, who are curious, Jeff Crosley is a hockey background. He played here in Richmond, grew up here, graduated from Steveston. And high before he uh, attended and played hockey at the uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks. Nakatsura went over the line. It was hit by McCain and met there. Did you know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, a little piece of trivia there for you. The Flames bringing it over the line. That's El Gretto. Again, he gets close to the net, and that's about it. Loses the puck, but the Flames keep it in. Shot from the point. By McCain is blocked. Wade Bowley now gets it for the Sockeyes. He's got four Sockeyes with him. Bowley brings it in, but Sean Tarr went offside, and he's not happy about it, but Tarr was offside. He really didn't give it a lot of effort to stay onside, and the linesman caught him. I find it amazing the Ridge Meadow Flames have 11 players in the top 21 in scoring. The Sockeyes have three. The Sockeyes have got the best defense in the league, which is showing tonight these uh, Ridge Meadow Flames just can't score like they normally do against other teams. They can't score against the Sockeyes. Yeah, uh, Richmond, Richmond scored 110 goals and has given up 53. And uh, well, these, these numbers are before this game. Yes. Um, and the Ridge, Me Ridge Meadows has scored 113 and given up 81. Zercher's out there with Overgaard and Howitt, Robertson, and Dennis at the point. Searcher brings it in, the Flames dump it out. Dennis gets the puck at center ice and dumps it right back in. And, and we get, she's got it. We got, we got to thank league statistician Eric Iverson uh, for these numbers. He does a great job. Yeah, what can we do without him? Overguard dumps it in and giving chase is Overguard. Keish gets to it behind his net. Dumps it up to the right side. It's blocked there by Dennis. Good play to keep it in. Howitt's in the right corner. Here comes back to the point. Robertson wrist shot. Shoots. Good save 
by Ivanic. Stick save again. Time after time, Ivanic is there. Here's a wraparound by Overgaard, and Ivanic jumps on it and stops the play. A little rough stuff here between Overgaard and Quiche. A little pushing and shoving. Again, this game could get very rough. Remember this. Both teams have got a lot of penalties. The Sockeyes with 536. The Flames, 735. And we're going to have a couple more, actually, for the uh, Richmond Sockeyes. The crowd here doesn't like it all that much there. Well, the Sockeyes are only get, the only one getting the penalty. That'll be Overgaard get it going to the box. And Robertson is talking to Remnick right Take now. a look at the replay. There's Overgaard with a, with a wraparound attempt. Fails to score there. Put the, put the, fails to score and put the puck past the Ziga Ivanic of the Flames. And there he is sitting in the penalty box. He's put his team shorthanded for a couple of minutes. It's a great time for the Flames to get back into this hockey game. They have been completely outplayed here in the second period. They've got a power play, a chance to bring the momentum back to their side. Mm -hmm. Marion's out there, wins the draw, gets it back to Tavisee, Eaton over to Keish. Jeff Overgaard, two minutes for slashing. Time of the call, 12.30. So Overgaard goes off for slashing. And the Flames looking to use this power play to get him back in it. Keish from the point, big shot. It was blocked in front by one of the defensemen. I think McLean got a stick on it. Marion, left side, puts it back to Eaton at the point. Eaton wrists it high, easy blocker save for Kirst. Goes right back to Marion. Rob Marion, he's second in points for the Flames this year. Back to Eaton, Eaton at the point, nice blast, didn't get through. Kirst made a nice save on the second shot, and Kirst is showing that he can be there as well. Yeah. Big save. Yeah. yeah, he'd been watching Ivanic over a, 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 <laughs> on the other side of the ice make some, some pretty spectacular saves. <clears throat> And Barry, and Barry, Barry and Kirst is saying, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm equal to the challenge. You can see him, see him down there on his side just <clears throat> doing all he can to keep that puck from going in the net. And Barry and Kirst knows that if he has a bad game, they've got a very capable backup goalie. I don't even want to call him a backup goalie mm -hmm. because I, I see him as a starter as well. Ryan Dawes has played great this year, and if, if Kirst is having a rough game, you know Dawes will be in there. Yeah, weren't you actually surprised to see Kirst get, get the start today? I was surprised, and I've been surprised the last couple of games because it seems like we're seeing more and more of Kirst mm -hmm. and not so much of Dawes. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe uh, Dawes is getting a bit of a rest, and, and uh, Jeff Crosley wants to have two capable goalies all year that he can count on. Rob Marion's got the puck, puts it back to Keish. Keish back to Marion. Marion just backhands it in. A backhanding chance there. Nice save. Cursed on Dan Tall. And it's funny, the, the, not funny, the Flames have got Keish and Eaton out there for the whole power play. They've been out there for, well, the first 55 seconds. And oh, that's nothing for these guys. These guys, these guys, they can finish a hockey game and then, like, go for a jog. They're, in, they're like... They're like 16 to 20 years old. Don't you remember when you were 16 to 20? You could... It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Keish... like, like, uh, unless you were playing two or three sports, you were, uh, you know, at one time you are considered handicapped. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The Sockeyes win the draw and then clear it out. Big play for the Sockeyes with only 57 seconds left in this power play for the Flames. Eaton has the puck, puts it behind the net for Keish. Keish missed it, but it went right to Trimble. Now Trimble has trouble with it. Brad Swanson tries to go after him, can't get him. Keish has got the puck on the left side. Gains the blue line, leaves it there for Darcy Pinch. Pinch back to the point to Eaton. Eaton winds up, shoots, long shot, and it went right into Curse. Curse didn't see it, but it hit him. That, that went through a crowd of players, both Flames and Sockeyes. I, I was surprised it didn't, it didn't hit a leg or hit a stick. When, and <clears throat> I don't even think that Curse saw it. He just, you know, uh, he just uh, anticipated where the puck would go and stopped it. You take a look. A very dangerous shot. These shots work because they can be deflected. Yeah. And it might have been even deflected. It looked like on that replay that it might have been. Kirst was on his knees and it just happened to hit him. He was a little lucky yeah. on that play. Yeah. He's <clears throat> Trimble to take the face off. He loses the draw and Dorohoy clears it the length of the ice. 33 seconds left in the Flames power play. Ivanic. Ziga Ivanic. Playing in goal for the Flames tonight. His first game of the season. Playing very well. No, it's not. This is his third. Sorry. I stand corrected. He's, he's got two wins already for the Flames, and he's uh, <clears throat> looking for his third. The Flames have the puck. Nice steal by Jody Crane. Crane in a race with Keish, and Keish holds him up. Crane still gets the puck and then loses it as Tavis Eaton steered him wide. Crane really had a tough time getting past his player. Here comes a play, uh, penalty. This will go against the Flames as Dorohoy was 
brought down to the ice by number nine, Darcy Pinch. He'll go off for two minutes. Yeah, and the Sockeye faithful love it. They're cheering it on. They, they, <clears throat> they're excited to see the Sockeye's power play. Yeah, Dar Darcy Pinch, this is like his second penalty of the night. He's, he's got he's to start playing a little bit more discipline. He's, you know, he's going to start hurting his team. We talked to Crowther before the game, and he said that... That's yes, him right there, Crowther. Yes, we <laughs> talked to him before the game, and he said that he was not happy with his team taking so many penalties, but lately it hasn't been as many as it was in the beginning of the season, so he is happy with that. Tonight, they've been taking a whole load of penalties. Darcy Pinch, two minutes for cross-checking. Time of the call, 14.32. But you can see with that stoic look on his face, he's not happy no, about it at all. He can't be. Sockeyes have got a deadly power play. Ryan Dorohoy on the left side. Chases after it. Comes back to the point. Dean Dennis puts it back to Sean Tarr. Left side. Tarr with the puck. Looks to set up. Back to Dorohoy behind the net. Dorohoy moves back to where Tarr was. Back to the point now to Dennis. Dennis to Tarr. Or sorry to Dorohoy. Dorohoy walks in. Puts it to Tarr. In front to Dorohoy. It deflected over top of the net. Dorohoy never got a chance to shoot it. And the puck is cleared out. Now, Sean Tarr, number 24 for the Richmond Sockeyes, uh, he's a converted defenseman, a, a converted forward, actually. He used to be a, a defenseman. He's been a defenseman all, all his hockey career. I, I, I think that, that um, Tarr would be more effective on the point in this situation, but, but uh, Crosley's play, pay, playing him up front. He moves him around. He's been on the point before. Uh, right now he is playing left wing. Yeah, they're putting him up. Because he's got, he's got a, you know, that booming defenseman shot. And, 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 he, and he handles the puck well. The Sockeyes look a little disorganized on this power play. When they have controlled it, they haven't got many shots. Here's a chance in front for Tarr, and he couldn't get his stick on it. Tarr got messed up with the goalie, Ivanic. The puck comes out. Dennis deflects it to Hutchinson. Brody Hutchinson. As Dan Tall has the puck, and he's killing this penalty effectively. Great play by Dan, Paul, Dan Tall. And there's a whistle here. I think this will be an offside against Tall for coming inside the line. Yeah, that, that was some pretty uh, fancy, clever play there by Tall to just kind of circle around it with the puck, play a little cat and mouse with the uh, with the sockeye checker, and just uh, kill 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 seconds off the uh, penalty. A great chance for the sockeyes to go up two to one and and edge ahead of the Flames on the power play. They've only got 24 seconds left in it. They haven't looked great. They've showed control, but not many great scoring opportunities. The Flames dump it in. Kirsch stops it for Bowley. Bowley behind his net. Skates out. Over his own blue line. Up to center ice and clears it in. Giving chase is Ivan Usyk and Hutchins. Ivanic tried to stop it. Couldn't. Hutchinson there with the puck. Loses it and it's cleared out by Rob Marion. Marion chases Bowley. Bowley sees him and just shoots it off the board. It's kept in by Pinch as Pinch comes out of the penalty box. The penalty is over. Pinch with a shot saved by Kirsch. It was going wide anyways. Dan Plant. Tried to chase after that puck. It's kept in by John Paveo. Paveo to Marion. Marion on the right side. Nice little move by Marion to put it behind his back. Marion keeps the puck. In front. Nice pass. Couldn't get a shot. Number 14 had a chance. Ryan Balzer, but he couldn't get a shot on net. A nice try by Dan Plant to feed Ivan Usyk. It might have been offside anyways, but the puck didn't get there as it was intercepted. The Flames dump it in. Bowley hits his man. Ivan Usyk to Hutchison. Hutchison down the left side. He's got Ivan Usyk with him. And Plant to Plant in front, scores! Nice pass by Hutchison. Plant was there and he buried it. 2 1 Sockeyes. <clears throat> yeah, the Sockeyes managing to convert on the fast break. Coming from their own zone, two on one situation. Yeah, look, you can see the Sockeyes deep in their own zone. They work the breakout. Oh, now we're going, we're going the wrong way. Oh, there we go. Uh, chasing after the puck there. <clears throat> A nice centering pass. 2-1 for the Sockeye. Great pass by Hutchison. Lifted it right over the defenseman, right on the tape of Dan Plant. By number 11, Don Plum. Assisted by number 26, Brody Hutchinson. And by number three, Coy Meyer. Meyer's got the third assist on that goal. Here's a chance. Steve Howard in on goal. High shot. And Ivanic there for the save as Howard just drilled it right into the chest. <clears throat> yeah, it was, a, it was a good play by Coy Myers to, uh, <clears throat> to, to, to dig hard in the boards there, throw the puck along the boards, right into the flame zone, and then Hutchison just, just hustled to, to grab the puck. He threw it out front because, and, and 
number 11. Plant. Sam Plant was where he was supposed to be, all alone. I've seen Hutchison only once this year, before this game, and that's the one thing I noticed. He's a very aggressive hockey player. He goes for it. No stopping him. He'll go after that puck, and he did there, and he made a great pass to Plant, and the Sockeyes lead 2-1. to one. Kirst comes way out of his net to play the puck and plays it well, but here comes a penalty. This will go against the Sockeyes. I'm not sure who's going to get it, or maybe it's against the Flames as Kirst is coming out of his net. Yeah, Kirst, Kirst went skating toward his bench to try and get a sixth attacker out there. Maybe he knows something that we don't. He's down there at ice level. Well, that could have been dangerous if the penalty was against... The Sockeyes. Absolutely. But, but it, the penalty isn't against the Sockeyes. That's, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's the other pinch. Chris. Chris Pinch. The, pin, the pinch boys are hurting the, are hurting the team. Well, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm not going to even touch that one. The pinch boys are hurting their team. Yes, they are. 2.14 left here in the second period. The Sockeyes have got another chance to go up. I didn't do that on purpose. Oh, come on, Steve. You're, you're known for that. I, I do. <laughs> but, and you know what? The time when I said uh, Zakai assistant coach Ron Popoff is a proud Pop, I, I just, yeah, that, right. that was an accident. Yeah, I right. I don't do that sort of stuff on purpose. The yeah. <laughs> Keep digging, buddy. Keep <laughs> digging. If it's bad, I didn't do it on purpose. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll go with that. <laughs> Sockeye's trying to get up by two here. Late in the second period, they've got a chance to do it. They're on the power play. They've scored one of those goals on the power play tonight. Yeah. Well, this, this, so far, this game isn't doing much for, uh, for uh, any of the players' individual statistics. We've only got three goals. It's amazing, and I'm waiting for both of these teams to just start snapping them in. Yeah, that's, I, well, I, I, I wouldn't expect that. I wouldn't expect that to, tonight. I have a feeling that it's going to be tight checking right to the end. And the goaltenders have looked... Very sharp, and that's a, a big reason why it's a 2-1 hockey game. Overgaard feeds Howitt. Howitt on the left side stops, looks to the point, gets it back to Robertson. Robertson back to Howitt. Howitt on the left side. They'd love to get a goal here. Robertson just rished it in, and it was a light shot. It was stopped by a flame defenseman. Well, just just to give uh, fans at home an idea of how many goals are you know scored uh, in uh, Pacific International Junior oh. Hockey games, like... Uh, <laughs> Abbotsford, Grand, uh, Abbotsford beat Grandview 7-6. Richmond beat Seattle 9-2. Rich Meadows beat Grandview 7-4. Richmond beat Seattle 10-4. So, you know, these games, there's often a lot of goals. There's another chance in front for Ivan Usyk and Howitt. Another save by Ivanic. The Flames get it to the point. Not out. Robertson keeps it in, puts it to Hutchison. Hutchison circles back, looks for someone to pass to. He's got Ivan Usyk behind the net. Back to Robertson. Robertson winds up, shoots, deflected by a defenseman. That was Paveo, actually McCain for the Flames, who went over top of the net. Hutchison keeps it in. Back to Howitt. 22 seconds left in the first period. Now at the point to Robertson. Into Howitt. Howitt's got a great chance. In on goal. Winds up, shoots. What a save by Ivanic. And man, Howitt's got to start me thinking, what is going on? This guy is killing me. Nice save by Ziga Ivanic for the Flames. 15 seconds left in the second. It's 2-1, Sockeyes. Well, he's just playing Johnny Bench back there, getting that trapper up and snapping the glove. Here's a replay. Doesn't want to pass ball. Yeah, Howitt gets in there all alone. He makes a nice move there around one defender. Kind of uses a, another one of his own players as sort of a pick, like you see in, in, in basketball. You, you see that a lot in hockey. It, when works his way in there alone, gets off the quick snapshot uh, that was heading to the <clears throat> top shelf, but Ivanic was there to stop it. Ivanic is definitely keeping the flames in this game. The penalty is now over. 12 seconds left in the period. Great shot, and then hit the post. Ivan Usyk hit the right post. Great shot from the point. In front now to Ivan Usyk. The pass was intercepted. Here comes the Flames. Two seconds left. They won't have enough time. The period will come to an end. The Sockeyes lead 2-1. to one. The difference in this period, I guess, is power plays. Okay, you can see Ivan Usyk with the sh shot that just... Whistle wide, or it might have hit the post. I think that just breezed the post. I heard a pretty loud clang. Yeah, yeah maybe Pete Crowther is uh, going to see if he can sign that kid up because he needs a goal, at least in the third period, to tie this thing up 2 2. Dan Plant has made it 2 to 1 for the Sockeyes, assisted by Hutchison and Coy Myers. A beautiful setup by Hutchison. The Sockeyes lead 2 to 1. 
Jeff Crosley's got to be going into this intermission happy with the play, comparing it to the first period. Well, I mean, uh, first first of all, the Sockeyes won that period. Obviously, they scored a goal, and and, and the Flames didn't. And and uh, you know, if if, it, if if let's say the Sockeyes hadn't scored, if uh, if this was a boxing round, you would have had to give it to the Sockeyes yes. because you know they they were forechecking for the entire 20 minutes. They and <clears throat> they 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 controlled the play in the in the flame zone. They had a number of good scoring chances. If it wasn't for uh, the goaltender Ivanic, you know this would have been this could be a four five one <clears throat> lead right now for the Richmond Sockeyes. I asked Crowther before the game why is he putting in Ivanic? He's uh, a new goalie to the team. They know what Malasi's made of. Ma Malasi's the the normal starting goalie, and he said he wants to see if Ivanic can prove himself. He wants to play him in these good top hockey games. Richmond's the best team in the league, and it looks like he's doing that tonight. He's proven himself. He's played great. Yeah, and and, and you know I I think that it's we can take a look here at the goal. That's that's um, Hutchison centering the pass to Plant. Plant just one timing it past Ivanic. But uh, I think we're going to see a couple of more go more goals tonight. However, like I pointed out just a, a few minutes ago, this game is a bit of an anomaly. You know, only three goals after after two periods. You know, we're used to seeing a lot more in this league. And Crowther's got to be concerned with the amount of penalties his team is taking, and he's got to stop that for the third period. If, if the Flames continue yeah. to take penalties, they're not going to come out of this game with a victory. Yeah, they, they, they took too many there. Uh, the, really, I mean, if you want to start pointing fingers, it's really the Pinch brothers. I mean, Darcy, uh, Chris Pinch uh, took one, and, and, Dar and Darcy Pinch took, took, took his second penalty second minor uh, of, of the game in that period as well. Well, they've definitely hurt the club in the second period especially. The Sockeyes lead 2-1 to one after 2. We'll have the third period right after this. Welcome back to the Richmond Arena. The Sockeyes leading the Ridge Meadow Flames 2-1 to one after two. That second goal scored by Dan Plant. I said it was on the power play, and in fact it wasn't. Uh, the only power play goal tonight was by the Ridge Meadow Flames, the first goal of the night. Big period for the Sockeyes. Um, if we look at the stats, the Ridge Meadow Flames have nine penalties overall tonight. The Sockeyes only five. That's a big difference in tonight's game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the Ridge Meadow Flames are going to have to play much more disciplined in the third period. First of all, they're, they're going to have to come from behind. They're down a goal. They need one in a hurry. This is crunch time, and uh, <clears throat> it's time to bear down. The Sockeyes are a big third period team. They score in bunches in the third period. Watch for them to do that in this third period. Yeah, but those were against teams that weren't in second place. That's true. Good point. <laughs> And the Sockeyes also have got a great goaltender to beat in Ziga Ivanic. He's played so well tonight for the Flames. He's really kept them in there. I would stay tuned, folks, because it's uh, it's going to come down right to the wire. Sockeyes have got Zerger out there with Howitz and Overgaard at the point. Robertson and Dean Dennis. Robertson's got the puck. Puck gets it over to Overgaard. Overgaard on the left side tries to dump it in. He's met there by Jamie Worcester. Yeah, and, and how it's another guy who averages a, a goal and an assist per game, and he's been uh, held off the score sheet so far, which is exactly what uh, Ridge <clears throat> Flames head coach Pete Crowther wanted to do. How it's the kind of player that plays in spurts. He has games where he looks good but can't get the puck between the pipes, and there's other games where he just explodes, and that's why he's got the most points for the Sockeyes this year. Mm -hmm. When he scores, he scores in bunches. However, he's seventh in league scoring. And there's uh, <clears throat> five Ridge Meadows Flames players above him. It's amazing to see how many players the Flames have in the top five. They've got four in scoring. And as you said, an 11 in the top 20. Right. Compared to the Sockeyes, three. That's right. An explosive team. They can score goals. Howitt's got the puck looking to score his first of the night. Gets it up to Dean Dennis. Center ice. Dennis dumps it in. Howitt gives chase. So does Jeff Overgaard. Ivanic stops the puck. Overgaard with a nice hit as he hits his man, Jamie Worcester. The puck went over the glass and stops the play. And there he is, the man himself, Steve Howitt. Skating off. Take a break. And there's Ziga Ivanic, goaltender for the Ridge Meadows Flames, playing his third game for the Fraser Valley team. 
All you Dan Plant fans, don't worry. That hit he took in the second period, he's okay. Yeah. Just got a bit of a bruise, and he'll be back. All three of them. <laughs> his mom, his dad, and his sister. Oh. Ivanusik in the slot, buries it right through the five hole. It's 3-1 Sockeyes. Mm. Big goal. He put it right through Ivanik's five hole. That only took the Sockeyes, what is that, a six? Mm -hmm. 54 seconds to score in this period. Yeah, that, uh, that puts the Flames in a corner. They're no longer down one. They're now down two. You got to remember that the Sockeyes have got a great defensive hockey team. Even though the Flames are great offensively, it's going to be very tough to beat the Sockeyes. We'll listen for the announcement on that goal. Goal scored by number 18, Marion Ivanusen. Assisted by number 26, Brody Hutchinson. And by number 24, Sean Tarr. Time of the goal, 52 seconds. That is Hutchinson's second assist on the night. The Sockeyes Ivan Usyk from Hutchinson and Tarr at 52 seconds. Chris McCain with the puck for the Flames gets it up to Benedictson. Benedictson can't get it to his player. Ivan Usyk steals and dumps it in as he's nailed. Here's a chance for Boley at the point. Winds up, shoots way wide of the net. He just misfired. Sean Tarr, left side corner. Puts it behind the net for Ivan Usyk. Ivan Usyk feeds it to Hutchison. Hutchison leaves it there for Tar. The Sockeye's controlling. Here's H Tar in front of the net. In front. Great shot low. And there's Ivanik for the save. Here's the chance in front. Ivan Usyk scores. That's his second in just over a minute. Marian Ivan Usyk. Four to one Sockeye's. And like I said in the second period, I've got to gloat a bit. This is the Sockeye's period. Yeah, yeah. Keep quiet, rookie. Yeah. The Sockeyes are known to score in the third, and here they come Time again. Out, Maple Ridge. Oh, Ridge Meadows just takes a timeout. Timeout, Ridge Meadows. And the so uh, Sockeye just went off. Hurt. I didn't see who it was I either. Didn't. Yeah, well, we can take a look at the re. Now we're looking at nothing. Oh, here's a look at the replay. Just <clears throat> relentless pressure <clears throat> by the Sockeyes in front of the Flames goal. They, I, they <clears throat> you give credit to the Sockeyes. They, uh, they, they came out... <clears throat> Uh, guns a blazing in this uh, third period and caught the, the Flames napping a little bit. Scored two quick ones on him. Well, it was wise for Crowther to call that timeout. He's got to settle down his team. They had a great first period, a great second period. Even though the Sockeyes really did control, they, they stayed in the game and they can't lose focus here. There's still lots of time. Yeah, they're down by three, but they still have a great chance. This team can score. Mm -hmm. Here's another replay on the goal. Richmond goal. His just, just too many white jerseys there, uh, just, just outside the crease, pounding away at the puck. Assisted by number 24, Sean Tarr. Time of the goal, 153. That's Tarr's second assist of the night. So yeah, a couple Sockeyes players with two. Well, they, they got two goals in one shift there. It's the Tarr, uh, even Usak, and who, who else is playing there with them? Looks like number 26, Hutchinson. Yeah, Hutchinson. Hutchinson. That's been a good line. Dan Plant is back on the ice for the Sockeyes. As the Flames bring it in over the line, Wade Boley's there in the right side corner. He'll get control of the puck and he'll dump it to right into the skates of Chris Pinch. Pinch keeps it in. Dan Plant with the puck, puts it behind the net. Fan on his pass, dangerous pass. Here is Pinch in front of the net. A chance now for Tavis Eaton, shot just wide. Behind the net, number 17, Brandon Sung. He lost control and Wade Boley will get it to center ice. Tavis Eaton for the Flames. Mm -hmm. He's had a good game and played a lot. He's logged a lot of ice time. He'll dump it to the blue line and out. Jody Crane dumped it back in, and like I said, it did come out. Mm -hmm. The play is called offside. Yeah, uh, Crane. Um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, not Crane. Darcy Pinch was uh, <clears throat> exchanging a, a couple of uh, love taps with a Richmond player, but didn't take a penalty. He's our, I think he's... I think he's. Uh, I think uh, Pinch has reached his quota so far this game. There's a look at Sean Tarr there on your, on your left, I believe, number 24, former Grandview Steeler, provincial champion with the team two years ago. The last meeting between these two teams saw the Sockeyes and the Flames tie at four. That was in Ridge Meadows tonight. A different story. Here comes Rob Marion. His pass is deflected way up high. Swanson gets it. So far, the Sockeyes look like they're ready to blow this team out of this building. 4-1 to one early here in the third period. It was 2-1 after 2. That's Dan Tall in front for Marion. Marion got stopped by Ivan Usyk. 
And there's McLean to clear it to the line. It's kept in, a high shot. Kirst went for it, couldn't bring it down. Swanson's got it left side. Brad Swanson dumps it in. Giving chase, Jesse Nakatsura. Haven't seen much of him lately in this game. Saw him a bit in the first, he hasn't played much in the second. And he's getting a bit of ice time here early in the third as Ivan Usyk dumps it back in. Nakatsura is there, puts it in front. Nice pass for Swanson. Swanson had a chance. He was held up. Didn't really get a good shot on net, but Ivanic was there to save it when Swanson did let it go. Well, he barely saved it. Ivanic was reeling a little bit and fell over backwards, and it was lucky that the puck just went between his pads. Here Take a look at the replay. There's <clears throat> Ivan Usyk dumping the puck in. Then he's getting the puck, gets the backhand shot out. Ooh. Ivanic never really saw it. Alex Zurcher there to take the face off for the Sockeyes against Trimble. Puck goes behind the net. Chris McCain. To Jeff Corbett. Corbett has trouble with it as Howitt met him. It goes right back to Paveo. Paveo tried to get it to Corbett and this Sockeye is really pressuring, pressuring, giving the Flames a lot of trouble. McLean from the point, long shot deflected. Yeah. And Ziga Ivanic covers up an easy shot for him. 15-49 left here in the third period. The Sockeyes lead 4-1. to one. Yeah, the Sockeyes with the relentless forecheck, not allowing the Flames to break out and get past center ice. And if they can keep that up for another 50 minutes and 49 seconds, <clears throat> they'll be on their way to another win. If you missed the first five minutes of this period, just sitting down with your popcorn, you missed two big goals. The Sockeyes lead 4-1. to one. Big start to this period for the Sockeyes as they clear it back in and a smart play by Ivanic. He covers up as how it was right there, ready to pounce. Yeah, if it's, if it's Sunday afternoon right now and you're just challenging, don't watch the 49ers and the Cowboys again. They must be getting tired of them by now. You're He's watching two top teams <laughs> here in the Pacific Junior Hockey League. We thank you for joining us this afternoon. Mm. Rogers 4, the Sockeyes and the Flames. And... Mark Patrick from AM600 making his play-by-play -play debut here on Rogers. And Steve Braverman from the Vancouver Echo doing mm. his... Not making his debut. <laughs> doing his usual great job at color. Although, it would be understandable if, I, if it was my debut, <laughs> the way I sound tonight. Uh, the face-off is going to come outside the blue line. The Sockeyes went in offside. Howitt, Zercher, and Overgaard at the point. Dennis and Robertson. Sockeyes looking to make this lead bigger than it already is. They lead 4-1. to one. Flames win the draw. <clears throat> and McCain's got it. Brings it in over the center ice. Gets over the blue line. Nice moves by McCain. He'll dump it in, but it stopped right there at Zercher. Pass, a bad pass right to the point. Big shot by number 14, Ryan Balzer. Saved by Virian Kirst. Behind the net, Dean Dennis for the Sockeyes. Puts it up to Overgaard, to Howitt at center ice. Howitt makes a nice play to get by McCain. How it's rubbed out on the left side boards by Paveo. And McCain will get there to dump it to the blue line. It didn't get there. Overgaard kept it in for Howitt. Howitt in front. Great chance. That searcher and Ivanic stopped it. The puck is beside the net. The Sockeyes still have control and now lose it. As Chris Pinch gets it out. All the way into the Sockeyes end. Another good chance there for the Sockeyes. Well, I Ivanic is keeping this a three-goal game, at the, you know, with his outstanding play between the pipes for the Flames. Hutchinson, big shot as Howitt set him up from behind the net, just went wide. This is Tavis Eaton with the puck for the Flames. Brings it in over to center ice. Eaton's had a great game for the Flames. Logged a lot of ice time. Zercher gets the puck behind the net as Eaton couldn't get in. Another bad pass by Zercher. That's his second in less than a minute. And the Flames have two good scoring chances. Very cursed is there. Zercher better get off because he's struggling. And there he goes. Here comes Robertson in on goal. The backhander as he slides into the net. The net comes off the moorings. And a dangerous play there by Robertson, but even more of a dangerous play. Zercher, his second bad pass. Mm -hmm. Get me off it. Get me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hurting. Help. Zercher's actually had a very good game. Don't want to... No, we don't want to take anything away from him. There's the one pass right there. Intercepted. Good shot on net. Luckily, Kirst made the good save. Yeah, the, the, the Flames not nearly as effective as the Sockeyes with the forecheck tonight. There's Howitt's move as he got stopped along the left side boards. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a common move. You, you, you knock the puck along the boards and you just skate past your defenseman. It's like a little give and go that you do yourself. Mm -hmm. 
using the boards as another player. How it does it well. Flames win the draw, cleared out. I do it well too when I play hockey. <laughs> yeah. That's like that's like my only move. It's the only one I have. Well, you're like a Gary Lupel. <laughs> yeah. Gary Lupel had one move. <laughs> You kind of look like a one-dimensional player. You kind of look like Gary Lupul. <laughs> you do. Yeah, ten years after his retirement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hutchison there to take the face off for the Sockeyes. Again, the Sockeyes lead four to one. Marion wins the draw, puts it back. He's got Eaton with the puck. Eaton over center ice, over the blue line. Eaton feeds Rod Algredo, and that play went in offside. A little bit of arguing going down there behind the Sockeyes net. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to come of it. Ivan Usyk playing hard tonight. He's got well, two goals. His girlfriend's got to be happy. She's just sitting to the right of us. Yeah, well, she's not happy when we say Marion. I know. Okay. It's Marion. Marion. Marion right. even Usyk. Just in case you're wondering, it's spelled M-A-R-I-J-A-N. J is in Joseph. That's right. So, actually, it was the, it was the last name that was given uh, Mark Jones and I trouble all, and, all, all year long. And myself as well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> that's that uh, pass that was intercepted. Zercher's pass. Good shot by Ryan Balzer. Well, well, you know if the Flames get a, get a goal quickly here, that it, that it's uh, suddenly a tight, ho tight two goal hockey game again. But they they need one. They, they need one, and they need to expedite it. Here's Marion in the chance in front. It's uh, deflected off a skate by the Sockeyes, and Hutchison brings it out. Yeah. Brody Hutchison yeah. over center ice, circles back, had nothing going, so he. Brought the puck back all the way into his own end now. Hutchinson mm -hmm. feathers the pass to Bowley. Bowley loses it. Here's the chance for Dan Tall. Mm -hmm. He passed it across. No flame was there. And you and you got to... Another chance well, just, to flame. The Sockeyes cleared out. You got to wonder now how, how the uh, ejection of uh, Flames captain Darcy Frederick has factored in here. Here's a great chance in front. The Flames score. That is number 15 or 18. I can't read his number, and I've missed it. I think it's 18, Dan Tall. Mm -hmm. No, it's 15. Sorry. That's Rod El Gretto. Great D goal by the Flames. Okay, take a look at replay there. The, the, the Sockeyes failed to clear the zone, and, and a number of players had already moved up, up the ice with the rush. And there's the Flames still, still pressuring the Sockeyes. Marion got nailed. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like, a, couple of, like a couple of Sockeyes committed... To, to to Marion, and uh, that 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 freed up. Uh, who who scored the goal again? Assisted by number eight. Rob that was Rod Marion. Algredo. Yeah, Algredo. And by number four, Tavis Eaton. Tavis Eaton finally gets Time a point for all his hard work tonight. He's played well, Eaton, and he gets a point on that goal by Algredo. Here's another chance for the Flames. They've got a bit of a boost now after that goal. Marion with a shot. It's blocked. Actually, that wasn't Marion. That was Darcy Pinch. Here's a chance for the Sockeyes. That's Dorohoy. He's got Plant with him. Dorohoy backhanded just wide. Well, that was great there by um, Brody Kitch to, to backtrack the way he get, didn't get between the two Sockeyes forwards who had started on a 2 on nothing and it, and it became a 2 on one because Kitch was hustling back. I think Dorohoy was surprised that he had that 2 on nothing and... It really looked like he wasn't sure what he wanted to do with it. Yeah. Plant's got the puck now, and he'll clear it in. Hopefully we'll get a replay on that. We can, we can see what, de see what uh, developed. It happened so quickly. And it did, and I think it happened too quickly for Dorohoy. Couldn't mm. seem to decide what he wanted to do, and he, he really didn't get a good chance to score. He didn't, he didn't get a good shot away. He had a good chance to score. He just didn't get a good shot away. Mm -hmm. It's cleared out. Robertson's got it at his own blue line. And, and, but that's, that's, what, that's, what, uh, that's the defender's job, to, to you know, create that bad shot. Fine, let him have it, but you know, give give your goalie a chance to make uh, some sort of save if it is a bad shot. Dean Dennis takes a shot from the point; it's blocked, and the Flames will clear it out. Here comes number 99, Jeff Corbin. He loses it to Robertson. Robertson will go behind his net. Nice move by Robertson to get away. Neil Robertson is a great defenseman for the Sockeyes. So consistent at the blue line. And Corbin's uh, making some sort of strange fashion statement here as well. He's got like one, one, one gray sock and one red sock. It looks like he's almost got a bandage on his leg. Yeah. Maybe that's it. I'm not sure. Brad Swanson giving chase. Can't imagine a bandage that big. And not on the outside of the sock either. Yeah. He's Ryan, a trendsetter, he is. Ryan Bolzer gets it up to Chris Pinch. Pinch up to Corbett. Corbett just dumps it out. Kirst is there to stop it. Mm -hmm. 
pinch, chases. Doesn't get a chance to pick up the passes. The Sockeyes clear it to the blue line. Is a high shot by Dean Dennis. Mm -hmm. Benedictson, haven't seen much of him tonight. Actually, that wasn't Benedictson, that was Mike Pete. But we haven't seen much of Benedictson tonight. He's one of their top scorers as well. Third in points for the Flames. They need guys like him to come together tonight and make some things happen if they want to get back into this hockey game. Yeah. Howitt chases after it on the left side. Steve Howitt clears it in front for Zercher. A great shot. Another good save by Ziga Ivanik. Another great chance for the Sockeyes. Bowley keeps it in. At the blue line, Zercher's got it. Alex Zercher makes a nice move, but is taken out by Pete. Zercher still goes after it. Tavis Eaton got, has it. Eaton brings it out over his own blue line. Eaton over center ice. He loves to stick handle. He leaves it for number 12, Darcy Frederick. That's not Frederick. Frederick's out. Actually, that's number 15. Sorry. Yeah, Albredo. Oh. Here's a chance for Howitt in the clear, and he got checked by Pete from behind. Howitt again with another chance. Just didn't seem to have the wheels to get away from Pete. Yeah, the, the, the Sockeyes are turning the flames around every time they seem to enter the zone. Sockeyes keep control. Here's a chance. Zercher is in front. It goes to the point. Overguard just spins around to shoot it in. It's in front of the net. Another shot. Good chance by Howard. Goes right across the crease. The Flames get it up to the sideboards. Dan Tall has it. Leaves it for Marion. Marion, nice move. Puts it through the weight. Legs of Wade Bowley. Bowley. Coy Myers hits Marion and gets the puck out. Here's Howitt, right side, dumps it in and goes off on the change as they've been out there for a long time. Yeah, and the Sockeyes, are, without a doubt, are playing some sort of neutralized trap right now. They're just, every like, every opportunity, just like, well, he, he tried to dump it in, but he failed to do so, but that, that's what they're doing. They're trying to stand up the flames at their own blue line and the center line, content to hold on for the lead, but they are getting some good scoring chances with that strategy. Here comes Brody Hutchison. Hutchison makes the move. He's got the puck. Shoots. Nice save by Ivanic. A great chance by Hutchison as he shows that great speed and great hustle. Tar puts it behind the net for Hutchison as he falls to his knees as he couldn't get the puck. Here's Benedictson. Finally, we get to see this guy. Nice pass to Trimble. Trimble in on that. He's taken out. And a pass going to be a penalty. Robertson and actually Gilfillan. Gilfillan's going to go off. Yeah. He took down Trimble. Yeah, well, Trimble had split the defense. He had possession of the puck, and he got hauled down, and that's why he lost it, and refs got to call it. Good call by Remenick. He's had a good game tonight, actually. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the replay here. Uh, there's Benedictson, and he makes a nice cross-ice pass that hits <clears throat> that hits Trimble right at the blue line. That's 91, right, Trimble? Yeah, yeah it hits Trimble right at the blue line. As he's crossing the blue line, he was lucky he didn't get called offside and he had so much speed that he was able to split those defenders and that's why he was hauled down so the sockeyes are looking to kill another penalty the ridge meadow flames do have a power play goal here tonight they're looking for their second they need it they're down by two this is a crucial part of the game for them 23 chris gilfillan two minutes for holding time of the call 11 31. here comes mclean he leaves it for nakatsura as they're shorthanded, it's Nakatsura, McLean, yeah. Shantar, and Brad Swanson out there to kill this two minutes. Yeah. Swanson stuck his leg out, almost took out his man. And this is where uh, Flames head coach Pete Crowther, you know, he puts out his best five players. They, they, they desperately need a goal to get back into this hockey game. Seven minutes, 56 seconds left in the match, and they're down by two. You've got to like having Brad Swanson out there to kill a penalty. This guy is a, another mm -hmm. great hustler. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Scoop Patrick here, didn't you uh, find a controversy there with Brad Swanson that you wanted to share with? We will share that sh with sh you. Share, share with um, Sockeyes fans? We will share that in the uh, next stoppage in play as Nakatsura gets the puck and clears it down the ice. Spencer Rogers is a player that came to the Sockeyes from the Surrey Rams. He played a couple games. From the Surrey who? Surrey Eagles. Uh, Eagles, right. Uh, Surrey that, Rams that's is, the football. Is, that's the football team. I, I knew that. He came from the Surrey Eagles, and he played a couple games with the Sockeyes and really disrupted a couple of the lines. Brad Swanson, I've heard, was one of the players that wasn't too happy. He uh, didn't get as much ice time as he's used to. Uh, Rogers has now gone back to Surrey, and you're seeing Brad Swanson play a bit more and in more crucial situations. Yeah. Brad Swanson is a great hockey player for this hockey team. Shot in by Tavis Eaton. Kirst is there with a save, deflects it over top of the glass. And it'll, it'll be interesting how, how to see how Swanson... <clears throat> D handles this situation knowing that that player w w is gone and he'll probably be getting that ice time back that he that he felt he was being deprived. I talked to Crosley about it and Crosley said that basically Swanson just wasn't playing as well. He's got to play harder to play and if Swanson plays harder he, he's going to get out there. 
And it looks Ooh, like he's broken harder tonight. Broken stick there by Tavis Eaton on a, a slap shot attempt. It's one of them aluminum jobbies. And who says those aluminum sticks don't break? Mm -hmm. Nice pass from Overgard to Howard. Howard just couldn't quite reach it, and it's actually a two-line pass. Actually, I don't know if it is. A, I don't know if it's an aluminum. I, I, I believe it's a wood stick. I don't know if we can get a shot of it. <clears throat> one of, yeah, it looks like it is a wood stick, actually. One of the uh, one of the uh, arena staff is. Here's is the broken part of the stick. Yeah, he's trying to. It it, it might be. An, I, I believe it is an aluminum. That's why he's trying to get it back to the player. And, you can see now it's being, yeah, it is now being returned to the player because you can just put another uh, a blade attachment onto it and it's still good. 7.04 left here in the third period. The Sockeyes lead 4-2, 35 seconds left in this penalty to Gil Fillon. I'll tell you, those, those are, I don't use one, but I, you know, I've tried, uh, just, just held, held them and, 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 and tried them out for like a minute or two, uh, but, uh, use it borrowing uh, some from other players on my team and they're really light, really, really light. Here's a chance for the Flames. Fan shot by Benedictson. He had a good chance, but fanned on it, and the Sockeyes will clear it. This will kill the remainder of the penalty. Actually, there's 11 seconds left yet. Gil Finland will probably get out before the Flames can get back in to the Sockeyes' end as they're taking their time with it. That's Brody Keish. They, they didn't have those aluminum sticks when you were playing road hockey, did they? No, they didn't. <laughs> I was using an all-plastic stick. <laughs> Or, a, or, a, or an old broom handle with one of them plastic blades. Super stuck blades, in, yeah. you bet. <laughs> Here's Zercher. He's got Howard on a two-on-one. Back to Howard. Shoots! And the puck went off the moorings. Or, sorry, the net went off the moorings. And it, I'm not even sure if the puck entered the net. but Oh, the puck never did enter the net. Good chance for Howard. Nice pass by Zercher. <laughs> and Eve Attic is, is uh, shaking his head, saying, when are these guys going to get me some goals? The Ridge Meadow Flames desperately need them. There's the shot right there. Yeah, there's a play. There's a player in the crease, number nine, Ryan Dorahoy. So if the puck had gone in, it might have got called back. Jody Crane to take the face off loses the draw to Ryan Balzer. As Dorahoy gets it back to Myers, Myers dumps it in. That should be an icing, maybe, maybe not. Okay, not. Pete gets the puck behind his net, sends it over to number 77, Jamie Worcester. Worcester up the glass to Chris Pinch. Pinch can't get anywhere as Myers clears it right back out. The puck comes look out. right up. That was close. That puck came very close to this area. Yeah, I was impressed though. You didn't even you didn't even flinch. Uh, you should see, you should see Mark. He like he like leaps underneath the table. With, you know, <laughs> if the puck's within like 20, 25 feet of him. Well, it was, it was close, but I saw it in time. It's scary when you don't see it until the last second. That's yeah. when you jump. I saw it coming up, so I had enough time to react. Flames win the draw. Mike Peake's got it, puts it behind his net. There for Jamie Worcester. Worcester can't control it. He's bothered by Dorohoy. Now he gets it, but Plant steals it. Dorohoy picks it up. Puts it behind the net to Jody Crane. Crane circles, and Dorohoy mixes it up with... Ivanic, the net comes off its moorings. We've got another stoppage in play. Well, you know, if the defensemen aren't going to take out those guys in front of the net, the goalie's going to have to. <laughs> no one else is going to do it for him. Ivanic's doing a lot tonight. Yeah. A lot more than just stopping pucks. There's a look at Jody Crane there for the uh, Richmond Sockeye. See if we can grab some stats on him. Jody Crane, three goals, 11 assists, 14 points, and four penalty minutes. So obviously he's probably not a guy who gets a lot of ice time. <clears throat> Jody Crane was... Uh, had a write-up in uh, about him in the um, Sockeyes uh, brochure program. The, the program. The program, that's the word. <laughs> now listen, get with the program. Yeah. Okay? Just kidding. Uh, he had a, a write-up mm -hmm. on him on the, in this uh, program, and he said that he's not an offensive player. Mm -hmm. He's more of a two-way defensive center, mm -hmm. and that's what he wants to concentrate on, mm -hmm. and he's, he's done a great job of that this year. Jody Crane has had a great season, and he's also put 14 points on the board. And he just won the faceoff. He did. Crane's got it. He falls to the ice. The Flames have a chance to clear it. They will get it out. That's Rob Marion. Rob Marion over the blue line. Gets hit hard by Bowley. Bowley takes him down. Nice play by Wade Bowley to take out Rob Marion. The puck comes right back to the blue line, kept in by John Paveo. Chance for Marion in front. Deflection. They score. That is a bad goal. If we see the replay, I think it went off one of the Flames players' legs and went in. Mm -hmm. I could and be wrong, but it didn't look like a very smooth goal. And that is exactly what uh, very, uh, Sockeye goalie Varian Kirst is saying to the official, to the referee Remenick. You can see, you can see the shot oh, happen quick. Hope we can see that again. 
Kirst really didn't have much of a chance. Our crack crew down there in the truck, led by uh, director Brian Bosworth. <clears throat> <laughs> so that's where he went after football. I was wondering. <laughs> well, you know, his, his <clears throat> that movie career didn't quite take off for him. <laughs> okay, yeah. here's a look at it again <clears throat> on the replay. From a different angle. Well, maybe not. Uh, that's it, it, uh, you it's know tough what? to see. It, it looks like Rod Allegretto got some got some wood on it and, and deflected the puck in. Nonetheless, that is a huge goal for the Flames, and the Sockeyes have just called a timeout. It's 4-3 now for yeah. the Sockeyes with tons of time left, 5-13. Well, well, I, I, well, there's a there's a Flames head coach, Pete Crowther. And Boy, this next uh, five minutes can, is going to be exciting. Can you read lips? I can't. No, neither can I. I can't, sorry. He's but, not uh, talking right now either, so yeah. it's going to be real hard. Well, look, watching the way Jeff Crosley was talking to his troops, I, I think he sees something wrong go going on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Flames have gotten right back into this game, mm -hmm. and this is going to go right down to the wire. The yeah. Sockeyes opened the period fast, mm -hmm. and now the Flames have edged their way back into this hockey game. Where, where did I hear that before, oh, that this no. game was going to come down to the wire? There's still five <laughs> minutes left. There's still five minutes left. It could go either way. And I'm still sticking with my Sockeyes. Yeah, I, I was hearing the word blowout early, uh, just a few minutes ago. At, at any rate, we got to get by that. And um, yeah, if, uh, don't touch your dial if you're surfing around. We got... Allegretto. Allegretto got the goal. A second. Assisted by number eight, Rob Marion. And by number six, John Pavel. Time of the goal, 14.47. Okay. So I'm just telling folks at home, uh, don't touch that dial. We got uh, we got ourselves a one-goal hockey game with four minutes and 47 seconds left. The team in white, the Richmond Sockeyes, lead the Ridge Meadows Flames in red, four to three. Take it away, Mark Patrick. Jamie Worcester over to Keish. Keish sets up Marion. Actually, Darcy Pinch. Pinch clears it in. Gil Fillin's there. Gil Fillin behind the net, rubbed out by Chris Pinch. Pinch. The both Pinch brothers are out there right now. Back to the point. Worcester, fanned on his shot. A rebound in front. Another shot. And the guys have put their... Some of the Flames players have put their hands up, but I think Kirst has made the save. The light did not go on. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> referee Brad Remenek is, uh, is, is spreading his arms to the side to show, to indicate a no goal, no goal. We would love to see a replay from our camera back there behind the net if we could get one. That would really... <laughs> Net cam, net cam. Show if it did go in or not. Yeah, the puck looked like it was on its way in from tough our from uh, our vantage point. Very tough to see, and the Flames are not happy with the well, call. There will be no goal. Well, why should there be? I mean, you've got you've got uh, you got you've got two indicators. That, uh, you've got two indicators. There's been a penalty called now to the Flames. I think it's unsportsmanlike conduct. Mm. Remnick made the call. Okay. A anyways, Mark, we've got you've got we got two indicators that there's a goal. Uh, one is the light coming on. Two is the referee pointing to the goal, saying, right. uh, saying I saw the puck cross the line. Neither of that happened. Right. Uh, you know, and we're not down there. Right. We're I mean, we're not in the goal judge's position. We're not in the referee's position. We can't make that call. The fans can't make that call. Sometimes the players can't even make that call. And uh, all, all, sign, all, all signs indicate that there's no goal. Number nine, Darcy Pinch is gone for the game. Unsportsmanlike okay. conduct, I'm sure, is the call. There will be no power play. He's just out of here. He's gone to the dressing room. As the Flames trying to tie this game up, Benedictson with a wrist shot just goes wide. And the Ridge Meadows penalty on number nine, Darcy Pinch, 10-minute misconduct. Time of the call, 15:39. Well, you know what? <laughs> The, the, the way he's played tonight, I don't think that uh, that that the the Two Flames are gonna are gonna miss much. No, he, that's like his third or fourth penalty of tonight. The Flames have really turned it up here. 3:54 left, and they are really pressing in the Sockeyes end. Here's a chance for Howard. He couldn't bring it to his stick as it was up in the air. Now a chance for Zercher. He lost control of the puck. The Sockeyes better be careful. The Flames are buzzing. Only down by one goal. That's John Paveo, leaves it there. As Chris Pinch comes out, brings it over center ice. Pinch over the blue line, it's stopped there. The Sockeyes clear it right back down the ice. This will be an icing. 
against the Sockeyes, and they'll take it. And this is this is a situation where faceoffs become so crucial. You know, you're down by a goal, just a few minutes left. Yeah, you got you're going all the way down to the down to the other end of the rink. You want to win that faceoff and give yourself a scoring opportunity. You lose the faceoff, you give the, the Sockeyes can easily clear the zone. And look at who they got out there taking the face back. Jody uh, Crane. Jody Crane. He's the man. Good call by Jeff Well, that's Cousin. for the Sockeyes. The Sockeyes want to win it so they can get the fuck out of there. That's right. The Flames want to win it. So they got Brendan's son. Crane won the draw, and the puck gets back to the yeah. point, though. The Flames get a shot. It's deflected out by Dan Plant. Yeah. With the puck now is Mike Pete. Looks for Ryan Balzer. Went right past him to Varian Kirst. Ridge Meadow Flames trying to make something happen. Can't. Dan Plant brings it over center ice and dumps it in. Ivanic is there to stop the puck. He clears it high. It deflected off a stick and comes right back down to number 17, Brandon Sung. Sung dumps it over to the right side boards. Ryan Balzer gets by Coy Myers. Here's a chance for Balzer. In on goal, passes it, and Sean Tarr clears it behind the net. A big hit on Sean Tarr. No call. Oh, my. Cross-checking from behind. No call by the ref. Here's a shot on net just wide. Shot by Brandon Sung, and the Flames are now pressuring, and it goes outside the line. There's bodies falling all over the place in the Sockeye zone. And Jody Crane just got nailed in the face by the end of the stick of Mike Pete. Well, the referees are going to, the officials are going to let a little bit go because it's a tight game. It is a tight game, and that's right. The refs seem to want to let this go. A clear penalty yeah. against, yeah. I'm not sure who hit Tar, but he went down hard. Oh, no icing there. The fans can't believe it. 2.06 left now in the third period. Tavis Eaton trying to make something happen for the Flames. they got to tie this game up. Here comes Dan Tall. He's taken down by Gil Fillon. Into the corner for Ron El Gretto. Overguard's there. Comes out to Marion. Marion passes it rink side. He's got Mike Pete. Pete Ooh. is nailed by Overguard. Nice hit, Jeff Overguard. He rocked Mike Pete in the right side boards. Brad Swanson gets it up to Overguard. Overguard, a lazy clearing, and he doesn't get it out. Overguard had lots of time, and he didn't get it out. That could be crucial. Let's see if the Sockeyes can get it out now after this, this play. That's El Gretto. He scored two goals in this period. To number 18, Dan Tall. Back to Tavis Eaton. Eaton winds up to flex high as Howard got his stick on it. And it looks like it's actually stuck in the yeah, ceiling that, of this arena. It's now part of Mineral Arena. As there's a hole in that, whatever that material is, the puck went right through it. Mm -hmm. See that big hole? Yeah. <laughs> wonder if we can get a shot of that. I don't know if we got a camera that can get up there. The puck went right through the ceiling, so mm -hmm. we won't be seeing that puck again tonight. Mm -hmm. 122 left. We're going to have to watch now for Ziga Ivanic to come out of the net. There's Je Jeff Grozzi scratching his beard a little bit. Huh? Here's a chance. The replay is there's that big hit. That was number 99, Jeff Corbett, who actually hit Tard. No penalty on the play. Good replay. Here's a chance for Nakatsura. Nakatsura up to Sean Tarr. Obviously, Tarr was not affected by that hit. He brings it in. Tarr almost got by his man. Keish brought him down. Now Tavis Eaton. Eaton into the line. He almost got rocked. And there's an offside call as Eaton was up in the air. He just missed the defenseman. He could have been nailed. Tavis Eaton sitting on the ice. Well, time's becoming a factor. Where do you hear that? You always hear that, but it's true. Time is running out here on the Ridge Meadow Flames. One minute left in this third period. It's 4-3 to three for the Richmond Sockeyes. Sockeyes have got two goals in this period by Miriam Ivanusik. And then the Flames responded with two goals from Rod Algretto. And that's how we come to this 4-3 score. Jody Crane's out there. He's out there in crucial times. He needs to win this faceoff. Let's see if he does it. He's up against Marion, who's the great faceoff man himself. And Marion actually wins the draw, but Crane ties him up and gets the puck. Big play by Crane. He may not have won the draw, but he tied up his man. The Sockeyes, Nakatsura. Gonna have to wait for the outcome for the third. For that and I guess they're calling play. an offside on this, although Nakatsura did come outside the blue line. 45 seconds left, 49 seconds left, actually. Third period, 4 3, Sockeyes. Yeah, it's tough to read the scoreboard. <laughs> It says 49 seconds left, although there is a couple bulbs missing. Sockeyes win the draw. Robertson has a tough time with it, but gets it to Crane. Crane puts it between his skates, gets the puck back to Robertson. 
A lot of sloppy center ice play here. Sockeyes are fine with this as long as they can dump it in, and they do. Chris Pinch leaves it for Nakatsura. Nakatsura just took a light shot, didn't really get much on it, went behind the net. Chris Pinch with the puck, seeing a lot of ice time here in the third period. And Gets there goes Ivanic. Ivanic is out of the net. The sixth man is on. The Sockeyes have got an empty net. Actually, the Flames do. The Sockeyes have got an empty net to score in. Here's a chance for Trimble. Trimble in on goal. Wrist shot. Hit the mask of Virian Kirst. Went up high. Good save by Kirst. He's using his head. Must apologize. I was silent there for about a minute or two. I was, uh, <clears throat> I was, I was heavily into picking the three stars. Picking the three stars. I was heavily immersed into picking the three stars. That's the word. 11 <laughs> seconds left. It's a good thing I work for a newspaper. I, I, I get the time to think of these words. <laughs> Well, Steve, what do we expect from the Flames here? 11 seconds left. Their net is empty. What do the Sockeyes have to do to, to, to keep this, this game? Well, it's real simple for the Flames. Put the puck on the net. I mean, that's all they can do. And, and the Sockeyes, it's just a matter of ringing it around the boards. Just don't, you know, don't center it. Stay out of the danger zone. Swanson lost the draw. Tavis Eaton at the point. High shot deflected. Funny. That almost... Bounced right into the net. A centering chance. And it doesn't get to the Flames. Ivan Usyk's got a chance. And that'll do it. it. Quick. Ivan Usyk could have had a goal if he shot it, but the time run out has ran out, and it is game over. The Richmond Sockeyes have defeated the Ridge Meadow Flames. Like Steve said, it was a close one. 4-3. to three. The Sockeyes win their 14th of the season. They move three points above the Flames and still have those two big games in hand. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's what happens when you get two very, very talented teams together. Just one sec. We'll have your three... Well, I thought I might... I'm I thought I might try and uh, get Jeff Crosley up here, but he's kind of busy. Anyways, uh, they're, they're, they're announcing the three stars that I selected, and uh, now I can be evaluated on my performance tonight. Well, we'll listen to the crowd and see what they think. Yeah. I did my best. Well, actually, no, well. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. here are tonight's three stars, as presented by Dave's Fish and Chips. Okay, here tonight's they are. Tonight's third star, with two assists, number 26, Brody Hutchinson. Good pick. I like it. I don't know his three stars. I didn't see him. Okay. Tonight's second star from Ridge Meadows, number 15, Rod Allegretto. He had two goals in the third period. And he was a big tonight's part. first star with two goals from your Sockeyes, number 18, Marion Ivanusek. Two big goals in the third period. Well, they were big goals because it, it really, I mean, it... Um, Ladies and gentlemen, the it, it really allowed scoring. the Sockeyes at that point to, to run away with the game. Okay, we're just taking a look at a replay on the on the on Flames goal. This made it close. Still hard to see what actually happened with that yeah, goal. Yeah. But nonetheless, that was the goal that brought the Flames within one and made yeah. it exciting. Yeah. Yeah. for all of us and all our Sockeyes fans. Well, I, and, you know, this, this is what you expect when two really good hockey teams uh, uh, face off against each other. It was, uh, it was wired at wire all the way. And uh, it's going to be a real battle all year. I bet you these, teams are, these two teams are going to be flip-flopping first place and second place uh, all, all season long. And uh, if, 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 if either one finishes first or second, there's a really good chance that these two teams will meet in the uh, PIJHL final. It just shows how good the Sockeyes are. This is a big test tonight, was a big test for the Sockeyes tonight, and they did it. They beat the Flames. Yes, but they beat the Flames with a, a, a Flames sans Darcy Frederick, the captain, who's as, as he's good for a goal and an assist a game. Uh, he went out early, he took a, took a, um, a checking from behind penalty, he, and he was tossed, and uh, that really hurt them. You know, you get, you, 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 if you add his goal, to the Flames, you know, it's a tie game. We could be in overtime right now. you got to be impressed with both goaltenders as well. Ziga Ivanic for the Ridgemont of Flames played outstanding. So did Varian Kirst. When he had to be there, he was there. He made the stop. Yeah, and I, and I was really close to picking him for, for a star, but I couldn't. He gave up four goals, and, uh, and they lost the game. Right. Well, Steve, thank you very much for tonight. That basically does it. The Richmond Sockeyes. Hey, hey, how, how about that Mark Patrick in his play-by-play -play de debut? Not bad, huh? Well, thank you. We'll be seeing more of him in the future.
The Richmond Sockeyes defeated the Ridge Meadow Flames 4-3 for Steve Braverman, the Vancouver Echo, the rest of the Rogers 4 staff. I'm Mark Patrick saying so long from the Mineral Arena. Thank mm -hmm. you.